What's good, everybody, and welcome to our full album review for Busta Rhymes' Extinction Level Event, The Final World Front, the album review. This is the Classic Quest podcast, the show where we go through the annals of hip-hop history, digging through those crates, going through these albums track by track, giving thoughts and opinions on every single song. And uh, the kinds of examples that we like to talk about are stuff like Buster Rhymes' Extinction Level Event, the final World Front album. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend, Bonnie. And we are super, super duper pleased super to duper. be here going through this album with y'all live on twitch so for those of you watching on the youtube side of things when this video does go up if you want to be part of the experience somewhere live sunday afternoons we're aiming for 3 p.m eastern standard times you can watch the video the whole thing live with us and interact with us as we go through the different tracks and maybe even have your comments make it into the final video for those of you on twitch welcome we're super pleased to have you hey, here hey. with us um we'll do a little little bit of housekeeping um so i got a new album that just came out called the alabama Quebec Connect. That's on the YouTube channel. Not, not bad, you can guys. check that out. Links in description. All that good stuff. On top of that, if you want to support us on the Patreon, that would be hella dope. Patreon.com slash behind that suit. Give us some love. We can do more reviews that way. And yeah. yeah, I also got a little contest running for those of you rappers out there that want to try your hand at a little a remix. Again, links in description. So let me know. i got to figure out how to add the descriptions to Twitch. But still, links in description everywhere else. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough of that good stuff. We're trying to go a little quicker, be a little smarter with how we do these reviews. And we do like to start them off describing our familiarity with each artist since we feel like it's more fair to like be honest with y'all and let you know what we think going into an album so okay. your lady friend bonnie why don't you tell us about your experiences with busta busta before coming into this album your thoughts on him in general your expectations for this project a little bit um so we have i mean i know who Buster rhymes is um I, I, he was not someone uh that was easily avoidable in my life, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, he's definitely, you know, he hasn't left um, maybe like a large impact on my life, but he's definitely left an impact on my life. Um, and we have covered, I know, I think we've covered one of his albums, if not one of his songs. Um, what have we done? We did the Coming album. <laughs> so the whole album, The Coming, is first one. Right. And I don't remember if you did another track, but we definitely have done a full other Buster Rhymes album at least wink wink yep. on this channel yeah and um I mean and also like he's just like like you just know him like from I mean even if you've never listened to any of his music like if you've watched like the Super Bowl or something like that like I feel like he's been in like commercials and things like that like over the years and um I don't know he's like a he's a you know I guess a public figure uh, of sorts and um he's just like a fun goofy loud uh kind of guy so that's kind of what I'm expecting from this album I guess fair enough yeah um for myself I'm a pretty big fan of Busta Rhymes uh I would argue that he's a huge influence in terms of how I talk just even how I talk, just the, the way that he expresses and delivers himself is so eloquent. His rhythms are so, they're just really nice. They're just nice to listen to. They're the kind of things that like not many people can actually do with the kind of timing and crazy cadences and erratic nature that he brings to the table in this way that seemingly only Busta Rhymes can. Um, honestly, for me, I'm having a Busta Rhymes weekend, right? Because this <laughs> isn't even the first Busta Rhymes album I'm talking about this weekend. Um, as y'all know, Extinction Level Event 2, The Wrath of God has come out. I did my little album review to that, and currently it's getting clicks over on the YouTube channel, which is which is really exciting. So if you, after watching this, are curious to see what I think about the new project, uh, jump over there and give us thoughts. I, I love the album as a spoiler. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a real contender for album of the year. I have to still think about that, but like it's one of those albums that got put onto that list of that has to get more consideration because it's hmm. deep. There's a bit of a couple of story elements and vibe he touches on subjects that are like you know kind of 
not stuff you would normally hear, like how child support or children are managed between parents and just different things, like really well done, really yeah. crazy things. Nats does incredible production, many other people that appear on this album. Something that I just wanted to point out, it was so cool how I'm pretty sure most of the producers that appeared on the part two are the same producers that appear over here on the part one of this project. So yeah, I think cool. that's fucking cool. I think that's a way of showing consistency, but that's why it was so important for me to actually go back and listen to this album, right? Because because we bumped it for the, like, honestly, for the first time, I heard this album yesterday, honestly, right before I did the second part for the album review. So I never really heard it. But as far as my familiarity with Busta, a lot of singles. Now, what I didn't realize is how smart and Busta was. Now, I know how, how dumb that kind of sounds. But when you listen to something like Break Your Neck, it is not necessarily showcasing the riveting deep intellectualism of Buster Rhymes and a lot of his songs are kind of flossy sex driven hits right? right so I would say a lot of the deep science math cuts kind of things weren't in the pop sphere of what I grew up with his crazy flows and his delivery and all that stuff were there but I guess I never really listened or understood kind of who the man was and then we did that first album and it was really fucking good um, but we, we just kind of scratched the surface and now I just listened to the second project where it's like old man Busta deciding to become an activist leader of the flock type person and it's really interesting and then he kind of references this album and he said something that I guess had to be taken into consideration. Okay. He was angry and hurt during the process of this album and I think it made a lot of sense for the purpose of how his sequel to the project, which we can touch on at the end. I'm going to I'm gonna save that for the end of this review. But is it really a good sequel? I think is worth answering, which is not something I could have answered yesterday, even when I did that review, because I had to hear this one. So that's really interesting. But I think it leads actually into... Anyway, all I have to say, I think Bust Rhymes is ridiculous, but <laughs> like, um, I never really thought of him as a writer before, so I wasn't sure if how this album would hold up against the new one. So that's what we're going we're gonna to discover together. Um, what do you think of the title of this project? Um, I mean, there's a lot. It's a lot kind of going on, I think. Um, but, like, it's, you know, it is kind of talking about, like, the final world front. Um, and, you know, it could be that we're going extinct. This is uh, December. Like, this album came out December 15th, 1998. So one year, basically, you know, and he definitely talks about it. Um, one year before uh, 2000 y2k and like all of that and like i'll get into get into that more um so it is relevant to the times um and to what was going on um also in terms of the cover itself um it's sort of like an explosion and i think it's supposed to be new york city i wasn't sure i think it's new york city um and apparently this was inspired by um, a lot of like the movies and like media that was like coming out at that time and like what they were talking about and a lot of like, you know, the world is ending and because people really didn't know, um, you know, if you're born in like 2000 or after, um, people really didn't know what was going to happen when the clock struck midnight at 2000, when it became a new millennium, people were, I don't know, there were theories that the com all the computers were just going to like turn off or explode or whatever. And that, I don't know, all of the earthquakes and volcanoes and everything was just like, I don't know, people really thought it was going to be like that. Um, but anyways, this was like inspired by like, you know, all of like the movies and everything that was happening at that time. And kind of like all of like the people who were like terrified of like, you know, what could come um and this is sort of again sort of like just kind of relating back to like movies and things like that i think it was they were talking about um like armageddon and like things like that uh like where you know there was going to be like an end of the world whether it was by like a huge comet or whatever it was an asteroid or whatever the heck it is um and just showing like the world under attack of some sort in one way or another whether it's 2000 uh and y2k and everything or from aliens from space somehow it's gonna happen can i interject real quick sure buster rhymes in the introduction to part two basically came to that conclusion wait a second they're doing a bunch of movies about disasters and end of the world again maybe something's up is something he says i think it's so cool how on the nose you were with that yeah that's amazing that's real cool of you on the nose there we go so anyway, just <laughs> But that's it. I mean, that's what it is. And like, you know, I think and he's from New York. And it was interesting that a lot of the time, um, like all of these, not all of them, but some of the like apocalyptic, like world ending type movies were taking place in 
New York uh, for some reason. I guess it is just like a an epic city and um, powerhouse. You know, of the and world. it's it's visual. You know, you're in New York City when you see like the you know Statue of Liberty or whatever. Like you know what city it is. You know, whereas you know if you get kind of plopped down in, I don't know. Iowa. <laughs> Some other, uh, yeah, Iowa City or something like that. I wouldn't Born, recognize it. Ormstown, Quebec. Well, I mean, like a city, like a city. But, uh, you know. Quebec City, Quebec. Well, uh, Quebec City is a little bit more recognizable. It's on those cookies. Is it? I, if you were to, like, <laughs> I swear, if you were to put, like, gun to my head five places and be like Quebec City, I might guess I if it I feel like wintry. you would know it just from, like, even if you've never been to know. France, even if you don't know okay, Quebec like, City, you would know the architecture But if you were to put something. it next to like three cities with similar architecture and say pick the one that's Quebec City, I couldn't, whereas New York is identifiable. I guess. Depends on which part you're seeing. Fair enough. But yeah. All the landscapes that would show up in a movie. <laughs> okay. Anyway. That's it. Um, I like the title because um, I feel like everything you're saying is true, but then it's also like um the social side of things right there's the riots there's the escalation of <laughs> violence throughout the 90s there's the even throughout like the music industry there's almost like a glorification of gangsterism that's gone on for the last while and mm -hmm. death and all these things whether or not it's legitimate is not the point of conversation it's more that there is more of a prevalence of it a bigger existence of it has become more to the forefront of it um and yeah, I really like what you said about the whole movie thing, kind of adding this foreshadowing of the general tension of it. And at the same time, uh, if you're into the conspiracy theory world, a lot of things are going on where like, you know, you're, you're predicting or you're, you're seeing predictions of all kinds of economic downfalls and political downfalls and every kind of downfall you can think of. So mm -hmm. I get the feeling that Buster Rhymes was paying attention to a lot of different things. Uh, that led him to just just based on that introduction of this album a little jump ahead if you listen to that introduction he, he was paying attention to a lot of different things and was able to see a lot of things happening in the world that were going to lead to some of the more disastrous cultural disastrous things that have happened because we can't necessarily say life is completely terrible today like in all ways but on a cultural front there's a lot of crisis that's happening in the north american sphere of, of the world where there's a lot of divisiveness where once there may have been more unity and a lot of things have escalated in an intense kind of way mm -hmm. so i think it's really interesting that it's almost like at least in the beginning of this project he kind of like conveys that general tone of what's to come uh, we can get into that real soon, but mm -hmm. even just the album title conveys that, like, <clears throat> this is what's going on. Y2K is going to be this catalyst for change. It's the, and even if it's not like the end of the world, it's the end of the way things have been is another way yeah. I took that title, right? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, it's we're like we're entering die. the future kind of as well. Like, you know, it, it was very futuristic. You could argue that the last 20 five years or so has been this entering the third phase of industrialization and at some point they'll put a beginning and end date officially for it but it's going to be like that where the old way is killed off entirely and the new way takes over and i think it's maybe really interesting to be able to tap into that so i love the, the imagery on the album cover too because it's just like this landscape with a fireball like shit's blowing up shit's going down it's a little more intense than say um the vagueness that we've been describing it's yeah. more like Pfft. i like the cover though i think it's really simple i think it stands out and it almost looks like the silhouette of buster rhymes is in the explosion like this coming out ready to like be yeah. the dominating force of it and i think that's really fucking cool maybe i'm just looking at it like it's like when you look at the clouds and you're seeing okay, things i can kind of see it but i think that's kind of what's happening there like because he's a powerful entity he is the bringer of the new you know the new world order in a sense mm -hmm. um, that's what i took from the cover at least what do you think of the cover so i don't know if you commented on it i totally fully commented on it yes fair enough I... <laughs> we anyway. had a conversation well i know we were talking about the movies and everything else <laughs> that's what it was based off of uh, anyway let's get into the uh intro then because there is only one, one year, year left. left um so i mean it's it's all right. Let's see. Um, so we have like a little girl and she is basically asking her father what the year 2000 is going to be like. And then, um, you know, he just kind of starts like talking to her normally, like the way most parents would answer, you know, a type of question like that. Um, and then he progressively gets like, you know, more like into like the depths of like all of like the bad things that are that are to come. 
Um, you know, but in reality, there's been like a lot of bad things that have already happened in the world and it's just a new millennium and it doesn't mean things are going to change or get worse because, you know, there's been crazy shit happening in the world since, I don't know, dinosaurs or before, uh, since humans showed up. Um, but anyways, and, um, you know, a year is just a year and it doesn't mean that all these terrible things are going to happen except for 2020, I guess. I don't know. But um, <laughs> so like anyways, again, like this is all like, you know, relative to like the Y2K fears and, you know, like all you guys said, like, you know, computers exploding and the world ending and just, you know, volcanoes and blah, 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 blah. And all these things that were going to happen and like the four horsemen of the apocalypse or whatever it is. And, uh, you know. Like this is, you know, in 2012, they said it was going to happen again. And like, this is just kind of like the same sort of things whenever people think or have predicted that the world is going to end. Um, so just sort of like all of that kind of stuff is kind of what he's saying. And, um, you know, he mentions like the hole in like the ozone is like uh, basically like depleted. And which is interesting because I haven't really heard anything about because I know like growing up like the ozone layer and like the hole in the ozone was like a huge thing. And it was like we all heard about it. Um, and then Didn't we like stop producing the bad chemical that was fucking up and, and then like, things started getting better. But did it like heal? Like what happened? I think that's like... what happened. I think we stopped producing the bad and it started healing. I'm gonna have to look into that because I feel like I never heard anything, you know. But I also, you know, where did acid rain go? I feel like that was like a thing in the '90s and that just disappeared. So I don't know. Um, I feel like there's like a lot of hype about certain things, and then I don't know they just die off or whatever. We just get used to them. Who knows? Um, yeah. So, anyways, or it makes me wonder like just how ginormous it is now. If it did get bigger or not, I don't know. Um, and again, he just kind of like increases his extreme his extremes, and he's talking about like that we be all um, we all become kind of cannibals, and it's just like all of like the worst things in the world are all happening at, at once, and you know, and then aliens have taken over, and you know, humanity has just like self destructed, and like we've done everything bad. It's just like a wild scenario, and it's sort of like what movies are made out of you know like all especially like at that time you know like, like what we were already saying and um but busta and flip mode squad are here to save the day basically so it's just sort of like detailed it's wild it's just sort of like you know it gets extreme his voice becomes like i can't do it but like sort of like digitally choppy sort of like what anonymous does like that kind of a voice um, and just sort of talking about the ends of times and it's really well done, honestly. So I give it a 4.6 on five. So from what I can read in this one article that I found from the Smithsonian Magazine, the ozone layer issue has in fact gotten better and this is maybe a problem because it helps people downplay other environmental issues because hey, the ozone layer was heralded as such a big deal, but look, that one. But I feel like it can't just be one because like I know. It, was, it kind of came and went, but we, we dealt with, I don't know. I don't have all the details. I'm not a scientist, okay? I'm just <laughs> saying I found what I found in the one article, quickly scanning it while you were describing that. But okay. um, I think it's also just showing up the time, right? Yeah. That would definitely date this album, <laughs> outside of the part where what's going to happen in the year 2000. But I think it's such a cool introduction. I know that maybe you didn't have as much of a cool impact on it as I did. But for me, when I listen to this, it told me that Buster Ramps is paying attention because there's a lot of different elements that he picks on. It's environmental issues, human greed and the way systems interact, what happens in areas and environments where resources are taken away or as he goes on even just to like the tax systems and how everyone's getting rich and the poor get fucked over and unleash mm -hmm. the worldwide destruction by means of nuclear holocaust annihilating the terrified masses did that happen no could it happen maybe then just kind of picturing this fallout-esque world of fucking you know cannibals coming through almost like the video game fallout uh it's pretty fucking great the way he puts this imagery there but it sounds like this really big metaphor for all of the terrible shit that's going to happen when we've hit that critical mass and go too far. But here's the thing. Let's say it didn't happen in the year 2000. This could still happen the way he described a lot of what he pictures here because it shows that he's tapped yeah. in towards the path of degradation that the great American empire has been on. And in a lot of ways, a lot of the planet is on. Because as much as the planet is working towards maybe peace and harmony in like some circles, most of the planet 
is capitalistically sucking the resources dry in the pursuit of war weapons and like maybe it's currently not bombs as we are focused on cyber terrorism and the internet but Yay. it's just a matter of like time before things like you know like i don't want to go too far with this but let's say um because i don't have any proof or anything but like a covid is let's say it was engineered you know yeah it, i'm not saying it was but i'm saying let's say it was that could be like the future of weaponry and shit or maybe we fuck up the planet and then that happens as a result of it which i think is also That's alluded to in this introduction likely. i love the way as it goes on the voice gets distorted and it builds up in the tension and it just adds into this great experience where it feels so cinematic and then i love the way it just ends before buster rhymes uh kick in he's like that's so cool i can't hardly wait because you hear all this shit and it almost sounds like as you pointed out like an action movie mm -hmm. and so this kid hears all this upcoming destruction and it doesn't necessarily process that this is a terrible series of events that's being glorified through the popular media of the era and it's like well you don't have to worry about it it's coming and in a lot of ways you can look outside in 2020 today and see a lot of shit that was only once an idea of the movies right here in our hometown type yeah. shit then, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, I think just this year itself is, you know, we just have crazy stories just from that. So, yeah, I mean, I can't say that I'm going to go, there's as many ideas brought forth on the rest of the album, unfortunately. Spoiler alert for those of you that don't watch the whole way through. I, I don't know. And I just want to ask while you're still here with us, uh, do you think Buster Rhymes lived up to like the concept that seems to be brought forth in this album? Because part of the grade of this track should go towards <laughs> does it set up the concept right? And I'm going to say yes, it does, but not like part two. Part two delivers on the album you expect. Part one does like a superhero hip hop version of it, I would argue. Mm, I'll argue that at the end. <laughs> but I would say it's like, a, and that's why I want to know your opinion, uh, what you guys think about it. So, because some of you aren't, aren't going to make it to the end. Uh, but anyway, I gave this intro 4.5. One way or another, it, it gave me intro. a lot to think about, a lot to talk about. And it sounds really cool to listen to. And then even when Buster Rhymes comes on at the end, that's a little goofy. It's part of why it's not a five. He mm. totally, it's like breaks the fourth wall, yeah. completely immersed in the experience. Buster shows up. Ba -ba! <laughs> I don't know. I liked it though. Um, so yeah, that's all I got to say about that. We can move on then, I guess, to everybody rise. I just have to say Knotts is a ridiculously talented producer. Uh, I think he stole the show on part two as far as production goes. The ones he did were absolutely in some of the best tracks on the album. And in the same way, I think some of the best tracks on this project are going to be the Knotts production. And it's kind of unfortunate that it's all tucked away in the beginning of the album. And if you'll notice, if you were watching the producers, it's honestly like all the Knotts ones all the Swiss Beats ones, all the Rock Wilder ones, yeah. all the DJ Scratch ones. And then I never, I don't know if that was a deliberate thing, but I mean, maybe there was a guy between the Swiss Beats ones actually that I think about it, but still it kind of felt like all of the ones by a particular producer were done in a row. And I bring that up because now that we're into the music, like Busta Rhymes does a lot of the same things on this album. And these things are amazing because I cannot convey to you all how much I fucking love listening to Buster Rhymes. But if that man read the phone book on this track, <laughs> like literally just read numbers and stats and and he was just did it the way he does it. He's one of those guys where you kind of get lost in the instrument that is his voice and the way that hits the beat to a point where sometimes it's really hard to pay attention to his lyrics because you just it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it didn't really matter to me what he was saying. Anytime I listened in, though, he's saying some dope and ridiculous shit, right? Like, it just sounds good. It's like, I'll be that live motherfucker from the Flipmo squad that readjusts the shit properly and hits you real hard. Then we affect with hard shit that sounds so beautiful. Couldn't find a better time more suitable to send a signal. And you're like, he's really got a lot of filler, syllable fillers. Yeah. And that's probably, okay, when you flow like crazy sometimes... The filler comes in. Now, this isn't like, like there are guys like Black Dot where like every single syllable is like part of this poetic composition, but there's just a lot of Buster Rhymes where it's this energy and this fucking vibe that he throws out. And it's not like anything he says is actually whack. It's, it's really verbose. It's like, yeah. 
so you may have noticed how long my reviews are. It's because I'm not good at brevity. Buster Rhymes is also not good at brevity. <laughs> it's just like his main concept in this track appears to be shit's going to get fucked up. Stack up your cheddar. Me and mines, the flip mode squad, we are going to be the soldiers who are thinking wise and acquiring. Like, here's an example. I'm going to hit all of my, y'all just follow the plan, just get money and capitalize and hold on to your stash. Amazing, actually. If you think about what he's saying, build capital, stack well. Yep. He's actually giving really great advice, which is stuff I never caught before. But now that I'm a guy looking for this kind of stuff in bars, I'm really happy that that's how Buster Rhymes chose to start this album. Get your wealth up. If you think about life 20 years later, anybody that got their wealth up 20 years ago is in a fucking great... They could own houses in a way that we <laughs> just can't as millennials. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's just great. Like, it just sets that up. And then him and his people are dope. They're going to hold it down for the name of hip hop. They're going to grind proper. So from a context of, like, his actual bars, I think it's really, really amazing, The like, what he actually has to say. But it's not like it needs a breakdown. It just doesn't. He's like, and we walked across the street and I slapped you across the face. But the way he said it is so dope. You're like, yo, that's it. That's the fire that you've heard because he's going to bring more talent than a theater major could bring into the delivery of that bar. <laughs> and he's going to have his crazy rhythms. And it's just, my gosh, the way he bounces on that hard hitting knots beats is just perfect. Everything about this track is just a fucking banger. Um, yeah. I like it a lot. I gave it a 4.5 on 5. I think it's really stand up and something I could easily go back to and listen to any day of the week. Yeah. Um, so that's basically what this is. It's like, uh, you know, at the beginning, it, you know, he's kind of calling out all of, like these American cities and, um, you know, he's shouting everybody out and he wants everybody to rise and everybody to like come up with them. And I think mm. that that's kind of cool. Um, and also like to rise, like I think is like, you know, kind of as like an army and like, like that's kind of like, I don't know how I took it. Like, you know, like we're going to fight this thing. Like, you know, we're not just going to let like the world end and like let it destroy us. We're going to like fight. And I don't know, like that was maybe my interpretation. I don't know. No, um, I think you're completely right. Like it's the kind of sense, get your stock up, your economic wealth. He doesn't want to get rich alone. Yeah. He wants to bring his people with him and anybody. He's very much about the whole and not necessarily about himself. And if you look at a, a squad like Griselda, who's popping today, you, you know, I've talked about Griselda mm -hmm. a lot. That's a core tenet of their ideology. Yeah. Build your wealth up, get your squad up, come. It's all movement of, of a group of people. But I, I think it is. And I, he kind of touches on it too. It's like, you have to be, great yourself before you can start you know working on everybody else and i think that that's kind of like a message that he's kind of touched on as well um so anyways he's just sending this message to out all of his followers to everybody he wants everybody to like do what he's doing and you know kind of you know get on the right path um and like like his energy like really is just like so 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 insane um and like which is really interesting because it's like next to like this like lovely piano melody with like some like nice like cymbals and like drumming as well but like it's nice piano and then you just like blah, 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 blah. and like it's just awesome and like <laughs> he's just a fun like even if he's talking about the end of the world you're like oh it's so much fun and like it's just good and um it's sort of just getting everyone's attention to listen to them, to see what's coming next, um, and that they are making smart moves. Uh, they as in the flip mode squad. So it's a good one. I like it. It's sort of like a, a motivational song uh, in the sense. And I like the beats. I gave this one a 4.35. Before we move on, there's just one more cool thing I thought he pointed out mm -hmm. that I think it ties into the second album. Okay. Where in the second album, he's kind of like, I told you all to listen to me and you never did. Mm. And he has that frustration he expresses. And then Chris Rock is basically going throughout that album. Yeah, Chris Rock. The whole album. We keep showing up being like, you'll never listen to Buster Rhymes. I told you to listen to Buster Rhymes. Yeah. Like when I really hear this now, I'm like, yeah, kind of. He's, he's like, I'm the leader. Do what I tell you. Stop arguing. Almost like people don't see what he's seeing. Yeah. And I really like that. He is the leader of the flip mode squad. Thought but leader. you can come along. What? He's a thought leader. I like it. Um. Anyway, I guess uh, I, uh, we could talk about where we are about to take it, right? Yeah. Right. So what do you think about this tune? Um, so he's just sort of like impressing us like with like his awesome rhyme skills and he's just kind of doing what he does. Um, and there's like this like digital type of like sound that's like in the beat on this one, um, which I found is like, you know, kind of like futuristic-y, like 2000-y of 
of him um, while also still sounding like a little bit like staticky, like it's like supposed to be staticky, like it's kind of like older than it is. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and this is just like one long verse of his basically. Um, and he's basically like just showing off on this one. This is just what that is. Um, you know, and he's like shouting out flip mode squad, um, you know, which is nice. You know, he's really like showing that he's like a part of like a group. He's not just like himself. Um, and that, you know, that they are really are like a team. Um, and for anyone who didn't believe them, they're about to take like the title of the best and you know, like that's it. They're, they're just, you know, they're just great. And that's it. I don't know. Um, his flows and rhymes are great. I don't really have too much else to say. I gave this one a 4.3. I love Knotts' production. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear that every single time Knott <laughs> shows up here. Dude, I just, you got to understand, I'm sitting there on this end of the week thing on this Zoom call, and we're watching this dude play as some unreleased music where a 2020 Knotts has produced for it, and we're like seeing this shit where we're like the connections. And then I swear, the following day on this end of the week Zoom call, Buster Rhymes shows up at the set to show love. And they captured the moment of the same Buster Rhymes we're talking about Buster there. Rhymes. And it's just to be like, I'm not saying I'm like connected to these people, but to be like on the same Zoom call where the dude's premiering brand new, unheard, like nobody heard that Nazi yet but mm -hmm. us, that little group of the people on the call. And so I'm like, okay, cool. And then we saw Raw Digga and she, Nats was all over that album. And one of these dudes I know up in Montreal, this guy Oliver Bro, he He's fucking like the hip hop wizard of knowledge when it comes down to like this kind of stuff. Like he puts us to shame. <laughs> uh, he was like, Nats is ridiculous. Watch for it. And so I did. And now seeing it on this track, like I had this trouble. It took me a second to even come back to the stream just because it's such good production. I wanted to sit there and keep listening to it. And I wish I could play it for y'all, but copyright law is what it is. So that y'all could just hear it, but you could also just like, you know, if you're on the live, whatever, you could just play it as we're talking. If you're in the YouTube, you could just pause it and go bump it. But it's just so ridiculous, the jarring, cutty kind of flow that, that comes through and it's just beautiful and smooth and creates this groove. And then Busta Rhymes, I think in the narrative of this album, he's attacking hip hop. I think hip hop is the target of this okay. because if we think about the capitalization of hip hop that's going on at the time and how well, there's a lot of whack shit, a lot of vapid shit going on at the time, which there was probably always a lot of whack vapid, but let's be real. There was always whack <laughs> rap. It wasn't like there was ever an era where there wasn't people that were whack with it. But imagine you're Busta Rhymes and you're going through the 90s and you're watching the changes where the realness is maybe fading away and the labels is really up in the games and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. I look at the situation like this is Busta Rhymes laying down this assault. So in the last track, it was like a call to arms. And in this track, he has to now flex on us. And it's just really like strong, I find. Like, you know, get money, fuck the bullshit, ain't nothing funny nowadays, violate quick, will your face bloody, freak show, have a whole shit, Chris, break your face from the swing of my hand, flick on my wrist. So he's just airily bashing you around, beating you with the lyrics, beating you with the things, but to the level of not give a shit, right? Like he's yeah. so fucking good that he's taking it almost futuristic. And he's so out there, I, I took these bars down. I had to make sure. Leaping lizard, always remain <laughs> grand wizard. Fuck around and sleep. You get caught up in my blizzard. I'm like, that works. What the fuck am I going to take from that? Yep. It's random as shit. It rhymes. There isn't really a deeper meaning there. I'm sorry. You can really go in, but it's because it's out there shit connected that makes these bars work. That's the brilliance of it. And that's how good Busta Rhymes is. Because who the fuck else could have made that and delivered that? Over a Nats beat, I made it sound beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the charm. And he proves his creativity. Because he goes from serious, serious, I'm going to fuck you up, slap you in the face bars, to in the same verse, that. That's like a high level of creativity that yep. I think a lot of people don't give the man credit for. So the way he wrote it, the energy in every fucking syllable he delivers, the effective use of ad libs and doubles and shit, 4.5 on 5. This is a brilliant, brilliant start to this album. <laughs> Has me extremely excited. And then we can move into the kind of title track, you know? Yeah. Extinction Level Event, The Song of Salvation. All right, so what do you think of this, in my opinion, masterpiece of a track? Spoilers, masterpiece of a track. Well, honestly, I don't have so much to say about it. Um, it's like, it has a really fun beat. Uh, it's kind of catchy. 
Um, there's nice verses, nice ad libs. I, you know, he's always I always find he's like really great with his ad libs. And the song is basically about like extinction, but like wants people to like be happy and kind of sing along a little bit. And I don't know, for me, like this one was more of like a like this gave me more of like a, a Busta feeling. Like it just feels more of like a Busta song. Like from like my own little brain, this is what I would feel like is more of like a classic Busta so song. So for me, it was fine. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't a masterpiece, unfortunately, but it was a good one and I liked it. And it was, I don't know, it was good. I gave this one a 4.2 on five. This is when it hit me because at the end of the track, he says something to the effect that will my uh, squad uh, some through at an astro my squad come through at an astronomically large size, moving the mountains, keeping all about bouncing, big up my bitches in the place who be screaming and shouting. I'm only here to present and bring the impact to the extinction level events, seeing the science salvation. And I thought to myself, what could this even mean? Um, so what if the whole point is the game is in a state of disarray, right? Because motherfuckers have basically been saying hip hop is dying and dead for like 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, guess what, old heads? Y'all were wrong. It never died. It's still here. But um, at the end of the day, you can put yourself in the perspective of a Buster Rhymes who's getting older in the game, watching fake cats come through, studio gangsters, all the shits. And imagine the point of this is this song is meant to be the song of salvation because it's like a call to arms that Buster Rhymes and the Flip Mode Squad are the true heroes of rap. Okay. In the sense of like they're heroes, they are the the leaders taking on that like tribe called Quest kind of mantra. Think about like the people they would have been inspired by, because this has a community leader element to this project. Like this album, yeah. I believe, is meant to be something for people to listen to, see the secrets to success, and be on that team of elevators, right? Yeah. So within that, you get the sense that they're coming through. You know, they're gonna come through like extreme loss for ones who did try to go against this wet your shit up like a sloppy tongue twist. That's a fucking good line, mm -hmm. right? Because a sloppy tongue twist is fucking wet and it's not very delightful. Most people I know they want sloppy when it's on the penis, not on the tongues and the kisses. Uh, but wait, yes. but wait, you don't know what you're talking about. Give without a doubt, where am I live? Give me a shout, yo yo. On the strength, shit, check foe. It's really hard. I gotta dodge a certain <laughs> word, you know. Yo. Uh, connect the four shots and guess who blew it from the next door so you get the sense that like he's coming through he's got the way to through it he's he's got soldiers with him he's got people and if you listen to flip mode as we'll get to on that posse cut they're actually one of the tighter posses that have posse like they're all good next to him and like most yep. of the posse cuts where you're kind of like this is one of the weaker songs on the album <laughs> time and time again on these classic projects like no no disrespect to um all of the people who rapped alongside Tupac, but very few of them had the energy and charisma in his squad to stand next to Tupac in the way where it's like, it feels uh, like Busta Rhymes curated and picked people who would be amazing next to him when he actually gets to the spinning. Um, but then I feel like the whole point of this is more to be a metaphor of him breaking through and this song is meant to drop the bomb on all the corrupt and whack hip hop and you know the salvation is here we good Buster Rhymes is bringing that real shit moving forward it's gonna be good yeah. but I think what really really steals it is that chorus that just that la 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 bit it's just so nice uh, it's taken from Early in the Morning by Tyree Bexter and his orchestra. It's a very obscure sample, but it's beautiful. It's haunting. And it just adds this like sense of hope to an otherwise like kind of corrupt and dark track. Like in the first few yep. songs of this album, there has been a war. And this is again produced by Knots. So we've got the Knots sequel, which is basically Buster Rhymes. So the Knots chapter of this project is the Buster Rhymes takeover of the game and right. this is kind of the end of it they've won the war he brought the extinction level everything's extinct and now him and his peeps is ready to move on and why am i saying that a little bit because we'll see how the next track starts with that little skit at the beginning and it's like okay okay that might be what's <laughs> happening here so do i think that the song in and of itself brings a lot new to the table with specific line by line bars Maybe not. It's very in line with what we've had. But I feel like at a track by track level, there is a little bit of a narrative moving forward. It's just okay. not the one you would expect from that introduction. Yeah. So I like this track and I give it a five on five. I think wow. it's fucking dope. Okay. I think it's one of the best tracks on the project. I mean, maybe down. that's why I feel like it's like a classic busted. Like it just sounds like 
like maybe I've heard this song, you know, in like another life or something, and you know, it just sounds like a classic to me, like a, one of his songs. Like, so I get, I guess, like that's kind of like what you're feeling as well. Mm. And then after the the world gets destroyed, Knotts is like, "I got you, fam. We out." And Swiss Beat shows up, so we can tear the roof off. All right, what do you think of Tear the Roof Off? Because I just got to say, the transition of Knott's production <laughs> to Swiss Beats is one of the harshest slaps in the faces I've ever gotten on an album. Yeah. Where, look, by itself, I can listen to his track. Because, listen, I love Swiss Beats. And I think what he does is really good. I I think, like, Knott's and Swiss Beats are just really different flavors. Yeah. Both flavors I really like. But I don't know how much i like them together on the same like like but then again the battle's over right yeah and after the ultimate blast that ended things this is how we rebuilt shit from the underground up swiss beats and i, I don't know maybe that's the point you went from that dark dreary shit into a but more maybe clubby vibey like feel opening things up and they want to like get out of the darkness that's like constricting them and just you know, pop the roof off and like have that sunshine or like whatever, that openness. I don't know. Fair enough. That's a weird interpretation, I guess. But what do you think of the song? This one is definitely more dancey. Like it's supposed to be, like I'm guessing supposed to be more like, not quite a club song, but like closer to that. Right. Um, And Uh, like- I think it's a club song. It's got Swiss beats on it. Not my club, but his club, sure. Um, (laughs) But it's like 98. I know, like, that's what it is. So, I mean, it, it's basically, like, you know, music. I don't know. Anyways, so it's his, uh, him and, like, Flip Mode Squad, and they're so good, and, you know, they blow the roof off with, like, their music and their skills and all of that, and um, they're great. For me, like, like their, like, lyrics, like, weren't, like, mind-blowing or anything, um, and it was just sort of, like, another decent song, but clearly they are all, you know, talented. They have skills. They, they do what they do. Um, and for me, it was good, but like, it definitely was a little bit like jarring, like the same sort of thing, like how it went from like one sound to kind of like a different sort of sound, but I mean, whatever. Um, I give this one a 4.1 on five. So here's the thing. The production is astronomically different. Busta is remarkably consistent Mm -hmm. between the sounds, right? Yeah. So what I love, okay. I'm not, when I say consistent, I don't mean that he's static and lacking dynamic because Buster Rhymes is dynamic in his consistent. Like his consistent is you don't know what the fuck comes next. So like it's yeah. like line to line, it'll change shit. And I love the way he plays with timing. Like break through, make all your people come to feel the force of my shaking like it was Kung Fu. I know I said that really sloppily, but it was more <laughs> to accentuate the point of how he's like bouncing on those fast parts and the punching parts and... I would say that is the thing that has inspired me the most in my writing with lyricism. Am I a Buster Rhymes? No. But the way he fucks up a flow is something that I think is truly inspirational. Um, I think this is just another fucking flossy track where he's proving his worth as an MC uh, by by rhyming. You know, hit you with some shit that make doctors come over to nurse you. You, you, you. I'm rolling <laughs> with my whole crew. Like, I, I just... I mean, it is what it is. There's, yep. there's not a whole lot in the specific lyrics of this. Like, he, I mean, have y'all with an effect like you never felt before. I leave you with somewhere freaky dicky metaphor. Rep for all my who stay repping the hardcore. Like, this is some top level club banger shit. That's why I actually think it's meant for to be in like okay. a club song on this album because. There's not much to think about. It's airy, top level, flossy. Uh, I might be my only real exposure to going to clubs is I go to a lot of gay clubs. So That's fair. I don't different, know. Different music. <laughs> I, I bet, like, because I could see myself dancing my little two step to this. Picture, picture a bunch of guys who can't do shit past the two step, okay? Okay. This is music for a bunch of guys who can't do shit past the two step mm. or some basic ass little break moves that are basically just fancy two steps like most okay. dudes i know we two step all right that's what we got we got a little two step <laughs> and we hope a lady grinds on our peen and that's the whole move of all the, the dancing so if something like this comes on i want to see booty shaking and i want to do my two step all right that's basically the situation of a track like this it's called you. you know and i just like the chorus yo rep my crew yo flip i'll hit you up and then you're supposed to like just fucking do the call response and you know it's kind of got that vibe to it which i think is just dope it's a simple chorus it's meant to be something you can almost picture the dj cut 
cutting the beat and people finishing the lyrics and shit. And whether or not it was a successful club banger, right? That's not the conversation. Yeah, it's that's what it's meant to be. Right. Okay. Um, with that, I do think it's a bit of a step down in my enjoyment, but it also just came after what I think is one of the best songs on the project, and it has such a jarring transition. So. I don't know if my grade reflects the standaloneness of the song's quality or its placement on the album, but it's a 4.25. I still think it's a good track, but it's less good. It is one of the less good ones on this album. No disrespect to Swizz Beats' production. It is a lot album placement. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I got to say about that one. And you're going to find that as the songs go on in this review, like less and less is going to get said about the buyers because... It's yeah. not like here's. But you have to hear it because I mean, it's, it's almost hard to describe. it's almost all in Buster Rhymes's charismatic delivery that shows the excellence of it, which is crazy how much content and subject matter he packed into ELE two, yeah. right? Because you didn't hear the second one yet. No. But almost all the songs have like unique subject matter and a lot more thoughts and interesting ideas are interlaced. So imagine this. With only a little bit of braggadocious, but most of the album's more conceptual. Okay. I, I really cool. think it's worth checking out if y'all haven't heard it yet. And if you I have, know, which ELE do you like better? Anyway, I'm just putting my opinions out here. Your lady friend Bonnie's being gangster with it against so all odds. So this to me is an excellent posse cut. They do mm -hmm. eights instead of sixteens, uh, and then they do two eights each chorus. Two eights chorus. That chorus is just slapping like flip mode squad here to drop bombs against all odds still remain gods. That's a dope line. If you think about the term God from the perspective of that five percent or nation of Islam point of okay. view, the empowering nature of the word God. And yeah, this is fresh on my mind. Buster Rhymes does a whole bit on the other the second album movies like Call Myself a God. And if you don't understand it, fine. Move on, go back, rewind it later when you get it. Not get it. That makes that line like fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you get each one of the members or a bunch of the members. I don't actually know how many people like were in five flip of them, mode. I think, on this. Five, five people join Busta. Yeah. Baby Sham starts off. And you know what I have to say? All of them flow. It, the lyrics are all right. You know, like, I mean, like if we look at what he says, bots cut in a slice your face, you rhymes as natural, hold lives and uh, hold two lives and four wives up in a crack capsule. Flip mode, cruddy styles have been passed to you. It's not bad. It's not. It's It's, it's great the way it sounds i don't know that i'm getting a lot out of the lyrics it just feels like a little bit what it's supposed to be okay. uh rampage has a great flow as well i like the way he pushes through and again it, they feel strong they feel like they can hold their own i don't feel like they're necessarily saying a whole lot that's overly profound beyond the same level of content that buster rhymes has brought through with the album like it's it's pretty much been like Sounds what right, we're yeah. getting you know uh, Rod Digga sounds wonderful. She does her shit. It's again fly. She's powerful. She's kicking it. Uh, she's doing her stuff. Spliff Star, the same thing. They all yeah. sound great. They all put out shit that makes me go, I would listen to any one of their solo projects. Don't get me wrong. We might even do it, but I don't know how many of them had solo projects. I have to look more into that. I don't know who Lord Have Mercy is, but he, he went right before Busta and sounded good doing it. Yep. Um, I, it doesn't say a lot. Like, yo, that bus with Loud Forest, that ghetto with us, that bang Machiavelli and trucks. I mean, what a way to relate to a lot of people saying, yo, we cruised to that Tupac. Fair. But like. But I feel like there's also like, like I like the, the he says the Machiavelli trucks and like, you know, trucks are Mac. There's mm. Mac is on them. Also, we're going to do that Machiavelli project next week. So we we're going to do it today, but, but then we did this. We did this because the other one came out. So we're going to do Machiavelli. Look at the timing, how it got mentioned up in this album review, yep. showing the connections. Uh, I do like the way it ends with the tra uh, fake thugs with lazy aid, track marks, rap stars, and a lot of aids. So it's cool that they are able to point out context. And I'm not trying to say that what they're saying is vapid or they're lacking things to say. Mm -hmm. I'm saying there's not a lot to interpret, break down. It's so what it is you know like gorilla dicking ky jelly for horse he's got a big dick and he needs lube to fuck horse what is there to say in that bar his delivery is excellent and i like the way he says it buster rhymes <laughs> is the same kind of shit yep. rolls through this verse it's really great to listen to i like the way he says it, he manages to rhyme nauticus and challenger that's impressive. Yeah. And it has to do with the way he pronounces it and the way he flows it. So all props and all respect to Buster Rhymes as well. I think this is a great song to listen to. It is produced by um, 
whoever Jamal is. And I don't know who Jamal is. <laughs> it's Jamal. But it's a 4.35, and I think it sounds great in the Swizz Beats part of the album. And I'm calling it the Swizz Beats part of the album, but it's a goof. But it seems like there's a bunch of chapters by main producer, like I said a bit earlier. So, yeah, I like the Swizz Beats parts of the album now that I've gotten used to it. And this is a 4.35. I feel like it's lacking the intensity that we just had. But this is a fun kind of, again, banger. Like, it could be in a more party-esque kind of vibe feel to it. Grandiosity, less yep. the world is ending severity. Yep. What do you think, though? I mean, I feel like you kind of said it. Like, it is what it is, right? Like, there's really not a lot to, like, go through. It's a crew track. We're got, we've got we got the Footmo Squad. Um, they're all good. Same sort of feelings I have. Um, you know, I like Rod Digga. She stands out, and I found her distinct. But also just because, like, we just recently covered one of her al albums. So go check that out if you haven't already. Because she's great. And I don't know, it, it's a crew track. It's, uh, you know, they sound like a, you know, a tough badass. They're here to kick some, you know, do, I don't know, do crazy things. But they're, uh, they sound cool. So I gave it a 4.2 on five. Fair enough. Well, Are you, you ready to, to move on? I sure am. I would like it if you could just give it to me raw. <laughs> yeah, I will. Oh boy. This beat sounds like Swiss beats listen to some Asian shit and wanted to make some Asian massage parlor beat. That that's what I feel like from the beat. I don't mm -hmm. know if you agree with me on that. Uh I mean I my notes I have that it felt like Chinese arithmetic uh, of sorts, which ah, is the Eric B and Rakim tune. You know, I always go back to them. So, like that was kind of what I assumed was the inspiration for this. Um, I don't know, um, but it definitely gave me that kind of a vibe, and I def I really enjoyed the Chinese arithmetic. Um, you know, from like the you know Eric B and Rakim, and uh, so I don't know. That was my interpretation of this. Um, I don't know. It's basically about how, you know, Busta wants to like sleep with this girl, uh, you know, raw, but he also mentions that he wears condoms. So it's good, you know, that he's al he almost busts through the plastic or whatever he says, something like that. Um, so it's like he's almost there, but it's not quite. And like, and it is sort of like, is he talking about sex? Is he talking about music? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but like, it's really great. His rap placement is like the way just like the way he like i can't like even like, describe like how he raps so like he he's just like incredible and like it, like you said like he just rhymes words with other words that you would think just would never like work but he makes them work and he just like spits them and like it, it's great um he has a really great flow and, and rhymes i like this one i gave this one a 4.4 .4. I think you hit it. This song is a fantastic double entendre. This is one of the ones where I feel like there was a little more to talk about because I guess the the niche is clear. Mm. Uh, he's taught he wants to give it to you raw. So both the lyrics of his and intensity of his flow and everything that he brings into music is always going to be raw, just like the sex he has. And I like it. Like and I, you know, straight banging up your head shit with phenomenal swing, like the ass on a black chick. So right away, we know that the music is supposed to make your head bop with the ferocity of a jiggly booty. Uh, fat dick to all of y'all with whack to clicks. And I'm like, that's a fucking, because now he's dick slapping everybody. I'm like, that's one of those bars where, like, nobody would say that today. Hoping they whip paper like a classic low-budget black flick. Last victim that I caught was fucking my last chick. So basically, like... That's a cool line, and I actually really like it because he's basically pointing out how all of the competition in the game is so whack, so like low budget with their shit that even when they get around to fucking want to bust his girls, he's already moved on, and it's just like yesterday's news and I'm shit. And I think that's a double entendre to flows and styles. So people who are jacking his styles on all these rappers who are trying to reproduce the Busta Rhymes experience, because let's be real, a lot of people want to be Busta Rhymes. A lot of people who yeah. are chopping and doing the fast stuff just wish they could be Buster Rhymes. Uh, not, th not that they know it. I think now everyone's trying to be Tech 9 and shit, but <laughs> once upon a time, if you like trace it back, a lot of people wish they could be Buster Rhymes. I love the end part when he's like, a new Thang chick wanted to fuck me to Wu-Tang. Thug chick started criticizing my new slang. And I like that because Wu-Tang's all about that slang, but they also brought the new slang. And then it also shows his new slang is mm -hmm. something that the OGs who like Wu-Tang maybe don't like. So that is a fucking clever series. Like, this is one of the more clever, like, oh shit, I was seeing bars and maybe I just missed 
80 percent of the cleverness on the album and on this one all the bars is popping out at me and it was just a lot easier to break down like that but oh my word this one and that's just the first verse and it keeps going and the way he like rhymes it like we thug romance into the jazzy sound of a xylophone ass backwards i'ma stick you more than a cactus lay my thug with the actress across the mattress knock it off the earth axis and broken glasses continue to continue when she make me bust blackberry molasses i mean I like that. It's such a great vivid imagery where like he's also doing it with this ex- 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 the, the flow sounds like he's busting, okay? <laughs> like that's a good way to talk about Buster Rhymes' flow. Almost every bar is like he's having an orgasm. And it's so good. It's like it's so fucking good. This track really is stand out to me. And uh I give it a 4.35 though. Why? Cuz that beat kind of sounds like an Asian massage parlor hooker music and um I don't think it's the best Swiss Beats beat I've ever heard. But, but I, think I think also, the aesthetic I just have to remember, the- like, in, like, in that time, I feel like Asian culture, like, had, like, a comeback. I feel like, like, there was a lot of, like, like, Japanese, but more like Japanese, I think, like, that, like, there was a lot of, like, kimonos that were, were like, being, like, worn to, like, the Grammys and stuff like that. Like, there was a lot of, I don't know what that was, but it was, like, a Japanese inspiration time. It's entirely possible. I just know that... The beat felt really simple and it sounded all right, but there was something about it that wasn't as enjoyable. It's not that it's poorly produced. Stylistically, it wasn't my thing as much as some of the other ones were. Uh, I still really like what Buster Rhymes brought to the table on this, okay? That's what I I can't take it away. It was so clever. It's almost like I wish the beat was done by knots. That would (laughs) have made it nicer for me. Um, I'm going to say on this one, it's a pretty great track. Um, I guess you could say... Sometimes when I talk about a bunch of shit, I uh, do it to death. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little too quick for you, right? <laughs> so on the song Tsar on the new album, Buster Rhymes does almost the entire track in that voice he does later on on the second verse where it kind of sounds like he's uh, a character off of Bugs Bunny where he's like, wah, bada, wah, bada. you know what yeah, I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. So he does like almost an entire track in that voice and a lot of people were like, oh, it wasn't that good. But honestly, hearing him tap into that flow here makes me appreciate that track because it actually kind of ties it into the sounds used on this album. Okay. And that's what he wanted to do with the new album was be something cool. that tapped into this era makes while sense. still being new and modern. And uh, he killed it, but um, I could, but I love the I love the way he switches his voice on this track. I think because yo, this this it's got this loose swingy vibe to it. Like it just kind of feels like he never stops. He just keeps rolling with it, but he's constantly a little bit delayed and late and kind of laid back with it. Like he's in no rush, and he can just keep running to it. But then every like four to six bars, he'll just like change his voice and his delivery with like almost like other people would put effects on their voice like kendrick would put a bunch of effects on his voice to accomplish the goal that buster rhymes just did because he probably is erratic i don't know if he's still doing blow at this point but he's still fucking (laughs) erratic buster rhymes and he's like like, it's like he's just really rolling with it like i know that sounded a little goofy but it to me is kind of like he got this throatiness to his flow here this kind of like it almost sounded like he was fucking wrecked like he was just drunk beyond belief and barely could keep his like flow together but not in a way that's undeliberate like it sounds like this is just masterfully him flowing properly but it also sounds like he was really wasted and from a control perspective on his tone, just exploded like angry dad buster. I don't know if you get what I mean, but like yeah. a bit like a bear on the track. Um, I find the lyrics are fine. Um, I just find it really enjoy. Like pin a pin or a needle, make you wobble the weeble. It's feeble back in my day. I used to get money, get legal, get some ass, cop a down, down at the regal, hit you with so much drama, mate. Always waited for the sequel. Yo, there ain't no equal to wop. And it just keeps going like that. And I like the fact that it's like, yo, I used to have this bad past and now I'm up in this place and people always want to see the sequel. The sequel took twenty years to twenty two years to come out and it's uh it's it's doing pretty well. People like this sequel for this album. Go. Anyway, Ask Hillary, met her down at Flappish and Hillary, and you're like, who the fuck is Hillary? She killed me, got me crazy, wild and acting straight grizz. Oh, I guess he fucked her or something. We never made it too far together. I left just trying to different. And he just keeps that flow. And it's just great. It's just really fun to listen to. Yeah. And I think that's what makes this song um, a really, really like cool and charming. Uh, it's done by Rockwilder, the beat. Uh, I, I just, it's a vibe. This is one of those, it's a vibe. And then it's like, how are we going to do this? Make the move. And it just, I don't remember how the chorus goes, but it's still a vibe. And I really enjoy it. Uh, the do it to death. Do it to death. You know, it just, 
yeah, that's that's kind of what Buster Rhymes does. He took that one flow, because that's kind of what he death. did, and he did that flow to death. He did yep. everything you could fucking possibly think. Oh, that's that's clever. I didn't even catch that before. You were like, I've been waiting for. I was gonna say that right away. <laughs> yeah, you're smarter than me. Okay, happy? Are you happy? Anyway, uh, I like this track. It's really enjoyable. Bonnie is smarter than me, and I uh, <laughs> I give it a four point five. Yeah. Um. I mean. Firstly, I have a little tangent to get into. Um, oh, oh. So the lyrics, uh, I ain't with it, but give me a quickie. I ain't into doing the licky licky. No, he's not. Mm-mm-mm. So, okay. First things first. So I think like male rap lyrics in the 90s were just whack when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, like, you know, he's talking about he doesn't perform oral sex on girls, but he wants it done to him. Um, and so, like, where's the equality in that? Huh? Huh? Um, you know, and then also, and I'm really not sure if this applies to him, but I just also kind of, like, want to, like, you know, keep doing this. But, like, whenever, um, like, guys and, again, male rap songs, um, you know, I think more from, like, the 90s, uh, when, like, they were telling, like, other guys to, like, suck their dick or whatever, like, you know, and I know we've talked about this before, um, you know, and rap as an ins- as an insult, and I can definitely know that I am thinking of DMX, like, off the top of my head, uh, he's definitely one, for instance, um, and it's all good, but then, like, being gay is, like, gross as fuck and wrong, and it's, like, like, I don't know. Is it? Because I'm like, you're telling this guy to suck your dick, but then you also won't go down on a girl. I'm confused. What's going on here? Um, so, like, I don't know what was being taught uh, about sex back then, or if it just wasn't. Like, if, like, you know, I know that there's, like, a, a stigma that, like, vaginas are just gross, and, like, you shouldn't put your face down there, and I don't know where that came from, because if, like, vaginas are gross, then the penis is just gross, too, because the penis is just in the vagina. So it's all the same thing, and that, I don't know. So I don't know um, why guys are proud to say like, oh, I don't do that. I don't go down on girls. But then I also know on the other foot um, that there are some badass women such as Trina, because I like listening to her. Um, Again, sort of, I think she was early 2000s, late 90s or whatever. Um, You know, and she also said that she wouldn't suck a a guy's dick. So I guess, you know, all's fair. I don't know. But I just wanted to have that little tangent again. I feel like I've talked about this, but you get what you give. Um, so, <laughs> or not. I don't know. Apparently you just get and you don't have to give. Um, but, you know, equality, equality. Just remember that. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I like the beat on this one. <laughs> um, and I like the, I always enjoy like sound effects and things like that in like the beats and whatever so i like the um what i'm assuming is a jail door slamming the slammer um that is being mixed in with it it's, and it's also like setting the tone for like kind of like where you're at like you're locked up you're like in darkness you're like in jail or whatever you know like those types of like feelings that i'm kind of getting um and you know he him and like his crew they're gonna make music until they're dead and I mean, really, like, his skill is fantastic. He is a master of rhymes. Like, the vital and critical lyrical, 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 I I literally can't even get to, like, the fourth word in this sentence without messing it up. So, vital and critical, literal, lyrical, make blanks, pitiful, going to the clinical, examine your physical, frightening and enlightening at the same time. Like, it's just... Like, I can't do it justice. Like, he's just so good. And, like, just the way it sounds is cool. Like, he's just, like, fun to, like, listen to. And, um, you know, he's good. He's, like, so smooth, like, with, like, what he does. He just makes it flawless. Um, so I give this a 4.5 as well. All right. We can move on to the next track, which is called... Keeping it tight. Like the vagina. Exactly. It is not licking. Exactly. So this one is pretty incredible. Uh, it's produced by Tumbling Dice and Armando Colon, and it is completely different sounding from most of the other ones. It's got this smooth, almost like Latin dancey feel to it. Like you can just kind of picture yourself doing a little tango, gliding across the room, listening to the beat of this. And the way he rhymes on it is smooth like that. Like flip mode, yeah, there been nothing iller. Busta Rhymes got another killer. Be gambling, playing CeeLo. And then, he does this ad lib after that CeeLo line where he's like, what? <laughs> and it's hilarious because he brings that back too. Like, gamble my money like Gambino. Scarface look like Al Pacino. And everyone's like, what? Like, I guess they're looking at him like, 
Does that make sense? That's a weird <laughs> line. Is that, is that, that's how I took it. I thought it was funny because it's almost like Busta Rhymes responding to himself, being like, you crazy Busta. Yep. But he has like ad libs at the end of every one of these. Like it's a fucking Migos track. Yep. And I, I, I know what I said. Migos came later. But it's cool <laughs> because this is basically but that Migos kind of Migos wouldn't have come if it weren't. For Busta. If the Amigos wouldn't have come if it wasn't for 3-6 Mafia, I can tell you that much. With the, with the triplet flows and all of the shit that they do with the trap music and everything from the Southern feel, I would I would go a lot more to 3-6 okay. Mafia, who we just learned a lot about last week's episode of Classic Quest. <laughs> anyway, um, but I feel like this track is just really that. Like the way he rides it is really in that flow. It's, it's basically an A flow, as in da 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 a but in this kind of smoother way, like now my pockets got muscles like Lou Ferringo. Hey, crop the shit. Hey, and that's what he's kind of right. doing on this flow the whole way through. But it's so tight. He's just pristine with it. Every single line is thing. He and what's keeps cool, it tight. but why why it's tight is because unlike most of the other tracks where he strings his bars together, creating this giant ensemble of crazy erraticness here, every line is isolated using an ad lib to bring them together. So okay. it's actually tight little individual rhymes coming through. And it's the first time we've seen this kind of composition and structure on this shit, uh, on this entire album. And I really like it. My favorite fucking part of this is you ain't eating, you looking thin, uh, thinner. Now you sinner. Now you a sinner, a part of your beginner. You better get off if you dance to who got the keys to my bimmer. Uh, you, you better off if you dance to who got the keys to my bimmer. And I like that song that like sim sima who got, I shouldn't sing it. Cause it's, it's probably a bad, it's probably a copyright thing, but you know, you know what I'm saying? That, um, that track there, I think it's, uh, Binny man i really like it i think it's cool that he brought that up like it's a good fucking vibe to it it's like listen go be that guy at the party if you're gonna be that don't try and front like you're this whole other shit is right. what i took from that and i feel like it's kind of the same double entendre me at the same time he is rapping in this really tight and concise way while conveying you know keep your shit tight be who you are supposed to be you know yeah. be, and it's just kind of what it is um i really enjoyed listening to this i think it's got a great flow to it and i gave it a 4.35 also it's cool that he shouted out CeeLo like that yeah um yeah this is definitely like a, a fun one i like it um you know same sort of thing that you were saying you know he he kind of rhymes to one particular rhyme per verse if that makes sense um you know and it has like a you know the beat is fine um, it is mostly just like him showing off, but he does, you know, a quite, quite good job of it. Um, so it is sort of like fun and loose in like the sense that he's sort of just like talking about like what kind of kinds of like shenanigans that he gets up to, and you know, like this is what they do, and like him and like the Flip Mode Squad crew, and um, you know, some of the songs, and you know, just to kind of mention it in terms of like the you know, world ending and like the explosions and, you know, 2000s coming. Eh, it's a little bit off because this isn't really about that. But, um, you know, it's still nice. So in terms of like the theme overall, there's like hits and misses. But um, yeah, I mean, it's still nice. And it definitely sounds like like a 90s or like a late 90s, um, like hip hop, pop sort of flow like there's something about it um i don't know i think i think it's a fine song it's fun uh, i gave it a 4.3 on 5 awesome i think the best song on the album debatably is next let's talk about give me some more all right i don't know if it's the the, the beat like dj scratch crushes it or it's the way he rides the beat or the energy because i don't feel like this is his fastest performance but it somehow comes off like the most energetic, fastest performance that we've gotten. So like, I don't actually know if it is or if it's just the energy he puts in. Right. But this is like one of those tracks where I, I, I think a lot of people don't have any fucking idea what he ever really got around to saying because you don't have to. By the time, by the time you've checked off every other list of excellence, like you, you listen to his, his voice and it's just so energetic. You start jumping and dancing and bouncing across the fucking room. I can't even sit still to the, I couldn't, every time I've heard this song, I had to get up and start moving. I couldn't sit still. The music video is phenomenal. I don't know if you caught this one, mm. but there's a little Busta Rhymes kid. It's extremely colorful. The beginning part okay. where he's like, as a shorty, you know, I'm a kid fell down, bumped my head. Uh oh, we got to switch on. I'm in flip mode. I guess it's the result of that. But then it's Busta Rhymes in these crazy outfits, ridiculous outfits, extremely colorful things, and it's cutting through. And honestly, 
it's it's a really well made video. I don't like a lot of music videos. I very rarely will comment. The other music video that came previously on this album was kind of trash, so I didn't bring it up. The one that comes later, well, Buster Rhymes looks cool in a suit of armor. But <laughs> honestly, this video was phenomenal. It felt like a Bjork video. A, a Bjork video mm. met like Spike Lee. So it's really cool. fucking cool. It's, I think it's Spike Lee. The one that uh, fucks with uh, fucking... Uh, uh, Missy Elliott's music videos. Maybe it's not Spike Lee. Uh, whatever. That that dude who does the Missy Elliott shit. I can't remember the name of it. Him right. I should know it. I'm sorry. I'm a music person. I should know this shit. Anyway, the lyrics are fine. Like I I don't know. Like I'm not getting money. Capital vibes. Die with a small guy. We got the vibes. Every that touch plot of my mind. For the equip, you know, become on with all the supplies. Got a big gun. Now I'm gonna show you the other side. You know, like it's just like this energy that he drops on every line, and it's just that crazy break your neck type energy. It feels like. Like a raw dirty version of break your neck that i think i like just as much if not better then you have the chorus yeah had enough give me some more yeah want to buy shit give me some more yo spliff what do we that give me some more and it's just this this compulsion this desire for more this like energy yo it ain't enough you got to keep running and that sense of urgency that sense of give me more that compulsiveness that turn up that mosh pit energy is just conveyed so excellently and so beautifully in the way that buster rhymes delivers every fucking lyric of this track lyrically it's in the same vein as a lot of what we've heard it really is like i don't have more to comment on the words it's honestly incredible how many of these songs these turn up amazing things were like honestly you it, it, i don't care what the words are that's not what is attracting me he could be going john smith five eight seven four nine three give me some more and i'd be like that that's good enough man you don't have to give me that's good enough give me some more give me some more phone numbers buster rhymes yep. okay um but he does actually say right like interesting shit like never should you ever try to fuck with my cream i od'd get it like an iod uh uh when my shit get all in your bloodstream because an iod is the bloodstream shit like it's it's not actually bad writing mm -hmm. it's just i mean what else am i gonna say about that bar it's clever he has yep. clever bars yep is it the most deeply insightful oh my god clever no. no but is it the fact that he's not just stuffing this with filler it's dope. Is there some filler? Of course there is. It's Buster Rhymes. You can't have that flow without a little bit of an, a little bit of filler. Like yeah. words like getting and all these little uh, the way he like throws in extra words like uh or the to fuck with the grammar and make it just a little bit weird. To feel like it's fine. I accept it because everything is perfect in that delivery. Yeah. This track is now one of my favorite songs. It's in my list of favorite rap songs that I. It's probably a couple hundred big, but <laughs> holy shit. Anytime I'm going to hear this track, it's going to make me want to move. And what else could you really want out of a banger? Something that wants to make you get up and break your neck. Hey. Five. Yeah. It's a five. Nice. Um, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like, you pretty much said it. I mean, this is like him basically showing us that he is a part of something great and that he's the greatest. And so, like, this is sort of like what I touched on earlier is that like he has to be great he has to be the greatest so that everybody else can be like him and he's sort of like setting the example and leading by example and um by doing that he's got his his crew and his like his squad and then he's trying to extend that outwards he wants everybody to rise up with him and that's why he is being the greatest and so this is sort of like him showing us that he is the greatest right and you know he's really like he's spitting like really impressively on this one like it's really great um you know he really comes in hard he brings the energy he he his like the vibe overall is like more intense and um i don't know it, it's just like and crazy like i don't know and he's just kind of talking about that he makes a lot of cash and that him and his crew like hold it down and we you know we do what we do and like that's just kind of what it is so it's really good it's catchy and it's sort of like a little bit eerie at the same time so i really liked it i gave this one a 4.5 on 5. all right so yo we're gonna move on now and we're gonna talk about is, is they, they wilded <laughs> with us and getting rowdy with us but what do you think about it um i find this one to be like so wild um like there's just like so much energy on this one and um holy hell mr kyle um did you know he could rap like that no. Do you know like, who Mr. Kyle is? I feel like I know who he is. Shake ass. Yeah. Watch yourself. Right. I'm like, I feel like or, I know the name. I move, bitch. Yeah, come. Yeah. See, Yako. I knew he was like somebody that uh -oh, I've like don't. encountered, uh, you know but what? I couldn't. As I'd say that, I guess I did know Mystical could rap like that. I just didn't know he could rap like that. that I don't think fast. we've ever 
purposely listen to him. I think that's what it is, too. Mystical is a fascinating case study in how going to jail fucks up all the potential of your rap career. Huh? Because I think he's out See? now. That'll do it. But not a lot of people care that he's out. But he was gone for, like, like he came out with, like, some strong hits. Like, he's on Ludacris. Hmm. And then he went to jail for yep. a long patch of stretch. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, and it, but he is like in crazy, and he's incredible, and like he's like a perfect fit, like for Basta to like be working with. Like they're both just like, it's like they both just did like a whole a whole like, like sandwich bag full of coke, and then we're like, let's do it, and like they're just like so much energy, and like crazy spitting, and Busta's a wild spitter, and like. Ad libs are so good. Like it's just like a wild good time. Um, like it's not necessarily my favorite song, but like I definitely have to give them like props for like their like intensity, for their energy, for their rowdiness. Um, I give this one a four point seven on five. It's probably like the highest rated one on here. All right. So what I just looked up to uh, Mystical's current legal situation. He's currently oh, yeah. dealing with more legal situations. Yeah. And I say it's sad because this guy is like, holy shit. Like, he's so talented. Uh, anyway. yeah, sometimes you just can't stay out of it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, like, don't want to comment like I know anything about his life. It's just I checked and it's like, oh, shit, he's got a lot of issues. Uh, he's got more issues going on. In 2017, he had a warrant issued for his arrest and was charged with, unfortunately, rape. And it's like, and it's like that was sexual battery and extortion was the original charges. Yep. It's like, oof, those are hard charges to like. Time and time again. You know, it's, it's, like, it's a hard charge to, like, stand by you for. It. I mean, granted, it could be completely fake. It could be completely blown out of proportion. Don't I don't know fuck all about the details. I know that it's unfortunate because, man, this is some talent. Yeah. Um, I like this track. I like the way it fucking starts. I like the shouting out flip mode to No Limit and the bouncing off. I didn't even realize that Mystical is on No Limit, which I believe is Master P's label, which is fucking strong. Hmm. Um, and then it just, this beat is ridiculous. It is one of the most banging. Like, if I everything I said about the last track is turned up a notch on this track, down at a speed and everything. This is that speed. This is that Buster Rhymes flex, and he can still rap faster than any motherfucker in the game because he brings it A plus speed on this shit. Like, I could not come close to just i'd have to practice to get anywhere near what buster rhymes is doing this it would take a yeah. little bit of effort some of the other ones i could kind of wing close and i couldn't get close to that he's sitting there with mystic he's going fucking top speed at that you know and i like the way his it just sounds rough like you don't even realize the verse starts you kind of almost feel like it's the chorus but then you realize it's the verse and he's just slapping you with his flow and it's just so high energy and it's just so great um as far as the bars go i mean come on it's the same level of what we're getting like when you bust it up and keep rhymes when you walk towards the tape offline for your boys got instinct rhymes when you bump between 16 lines when you bowl win the goal bitches scream win the goal keep ahead keep it live i mean i love the way mystical said that that didn't do anything for me as lyrics <laughs> it didn't really right before you go get your tattoo rhymes before you pick up bell in the bathroom peanut like, i'm like okay whatever keep saying it though i like the way it sounds i'd fucking march to this track any day of the week you know um when he goes hear my records feel my presence now and forever until you stop what you're doing and work it fuck it nice just complete it with a licking to the man right there tell you motherfuckers we came to do i'm like i don't know he doesn't say anything anybody else has said and then buster rhymes me and my mystical plan that generates sufficient amounts of funds across many lines generate the heat the place to radiate when i break should i drop create an earthquake and like right off the jump buster rhymes stands out i'm gonna make money with mystical by our art to spread the wealth to our people and we come through with the resonating power of our earthquake and it's just like yeah he's pretty dope buster rhymes kind of consistent with this shit and then he's powerful whatever and he likes the guys he likes the ladies he likes whatever yeah you know weak people stand out it doesn't matter they're killing it with the flow they're killing it with everything um i think this is the highlight of the album these two tracks back to back like yeah. oof, it's rare you get something like that on a project where the energy just you think it's perfect and they manage to crank it up and just make it even better and it's just ridiculous so it's a five on five again this is it's it's such a cool moment man that's yeah. three fives on his project so far for me it's it's really stand the fuck up hmm. anyway the truth is up in this purple room purple lighting there's a party going on over here that's right um to me this is a little bit again on that airy kind of slower let's say like that get, 
that tight track, like the tight lyrics where each line is kind of compressed, but it still flows so nice, you know? Like, yeah. ever since Jimmy Crack Corn, cracking on ever since the day I was born. Yes, we get busy whenever we have to perform, shaking your tushy, making your pussy get warm. And I like that. That is a good way of saying the girls kind of like, you know, react to it. It's like we up there performing and through my performance, we got you shaking your tushy and because you're all in the vibe, it makes your pussy warm up, which leads to the wet and gushy, which leads to the good times. Yeah. And then, ha ha ha, until all of you is gone. I'd be hitting until the morning, got you caught in my storm. And that's cool because it's like they're able to just keep resonating and rhyming and keeping it flowing and going all day and just, you know, creating this whole rhythm. And when they're around and when they're rocking the rhymes and when they're doing their shit, it's a Party and it's always a good vibe so they're killing it but to create the good vibes you want to be them because all the girls want them and all this shit but it's like in like when Busta Rhymes says it it's different than when most people say it because Busta Rhymes is one of those dudes where like especially at this part of the album he has effectively proven he can do things other people just cannot do yeah so he can say things like the tone of this track and he gets away with it he doesn't even have to really just he is justifying it yeah. is this the flexiest rhythm he has no in fact it's this smooth boss fuck you i can do what i want kind of rhythm it's calmer it's actually just more like regular almost not poor not less quality just a calmer vibe showing you i can do what you do can you do what I do? <laughs> and he's murking people at their own game is what I'm feeling with this. Because it's still got that air of a Buster Rhymes flow, but in a more of a regularness to it that other people might like have. You know, I like okay. it a lot. I think it's unfortunate placement. Everything that was following that last track that wasn't going to be like that last track was going to take a hit for me. So because of placement, 4.35 on 5. But I want to give credit to the beat because it is well made. DJ Scratch does a decent job. It's just, yo, everything after that last beat was going to sound a little less good. But if this track came on by itself, or maybe we skipped the last two tracks and then we just kind of kept the vibe, I would have liked this more for real. And that's part of how placement impacts grades on songs and stuff. So there you go. what do you think about this one? Um, well, I mean, this is party going on over here, right? So this one is supposed to be the party song. But for me, again, not my kind of party song. Like, I find it to be too slow. Um, like, like, it's just not like a party song in my opinion. So like, it wasn't what I was expecting based off of like the title and everything, but it's still fine. Um, you know, they never stop. They keep the party alive. They do what they do. Um, for me, it was all right. Like it was you not know, my favorite. So I gave this one a 4.1 on five. I think you're supposed to be a little bit closer to your guy and grinding a little slower and, you know, get it. You, you're past the last track where you were really making your booty shake. Yeah. And now you found a partner through the booty shaking. And like I think it's like a sort of party. It's not like a sort of party. Are you trying to say it's a fucking song? Maybe. All right, I understand. Because the other one was her cat rave sounds. Because I don't know about <laughs> your cats, but on the last Friday... Of every month in my apartment, there's a cat rave. And if you check out the Behind That Suit TikTok, oh my gosh, you'll see the cat <laughs> rave video. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. That's what I'm feeling here because we can't edit this out. This was just live. Yes. Um, did you give your grade though? I don't remember. Yeah, 4.1. Awesome. Do the bus a bus is next because I, I will bust in that raw shit we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing my luck on this internet thing. A little bit. To me, this is like Buster Rhymes trying to rap his ass off, but in the way you would use to describe somebody else rapping their ass off. And again, a little bit doing their styles and proving he can handle it, right? Because he's really playing in a more conventional, uh, almost multi-syllabic okay. kind of sound where yeah. like you would get from more tricky rappers, right. like like a Tech Nine might do it. Whereas Buster Rhymes is more of that smooth, erratic, like you know, like you know yeah. what I mean. You guys have seen the rest of this project. Whereas Mastermind get in his paper, now cross the fine line, money plenty, slipping gently, whip the Bentley, my Bentley runneth over empty with the gifts you sent me. You know, like he's really rhyming like that in a way that. He hasn't been rhyming like that, I would say, whereas he's been flowing like that on the other ones. And I, not to say he hasn't been rhyming, because he's mm -hmm. obviously been rhyming, but I meant in that kind of ridiculously punch it kind of way where you might get from a lot of the other New York cats that are excessively doing that as their main forte. So I think it's another track where Buster Rhymes here is flexing that he can just kind of like fucking take your style 
and do it really well. But while he's doing that, he's doing the really quick fillers in between. So he's punching with the same level of New York punchy shit that you would expect, but then adding that Buster Rhyme erraticness to it. So mm -hmm. not only can he do your flow when he does the bus a bus, because it's the Busta version of Bustin Raps, right? Yeah. I fucking love this track. I think it's really well done. I think DJ Scratch's beat is fucking cool. It's just this, the dinglies to it, the like overall, like this just felt like, yo, you just got to come up here and wrap your fucking ass off. And that's just what it sounds like he did. Like it, it felt like it was more clear vocals. Not to say he's ever like unclear, but you can understand every single word he says in this track in a way where other ones he's kind of going really fast or crazy with the rhythm and it seems like secondary to this one. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's just kind of the impression I got on this one. Yeah. Um, I like I like the feel of it. I, I like all of it. I feel like it just it, it just makes sense on this project. I don't have a lot more to comment on the bars. I really enjoyed it. I really like the way he he does the, the the whole structure of this flow on this one. And I think it's cool that this many tracks into a project, right? Because keep in mind we are on track thirteen of nineteen. It feels like we're getting a fresh sound on the instrumental front. And we're getting a fresh set of flow and lyrical kind of delivery. From a delivery perspective, fucking Buster Rhymes is up there with like literally the best of them. I think he's a top five delivery guy. Hmm. Not like a pizza delivery guy. <laughs> but like when it comes to delivery of, of lyrics, I don't know many that are like that good and that all over. There are some, don't get me wrong. But like guys might write better. But Busta Rhymes is a delivery. Oh my gosh, he's he's like he's one of my favorites. It's hard yep. for me to pick somebody I think is definitively better than Busta Rhymes hmm. at that kind of shit. Anyway, also like uh, I exile you and your X file, you and your next child, demolish it a wax style, because that's cool. Because if you watch the X Files, it's dope. And I knew Busta Rhymes watched the X Files with that introduction, so it <laughs> felt like a little validation for me there. Yeah, you had a, it's a good song. It really, really is. I really enjoyed listening to it. I give it a four point five. I think we're like right in this classic banger kind of fucking era. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, like the Busta Bus is pretty catchy. Um, like, <laughs> like Busta is like super cool, and people love him, and people want to be like him. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, people are basically just like clones of other people because he's untouchable. He is the best. Um, and like he really is. And he shows it like on this track. And, you know, he's quick and he's skillful and he has great rhymes. And it's such a fun, simple beat. And I feel like I've heard like something uh, like uh, with like using this sort of a beat before. Like maybe it's like, you know, a late 90s, like early 2000s sort of like feel. But there was like I couldn't figure out what song it was in my head that made me think of it but anyways um it's it's a fun one it, like i said it's fun it's simple it's great it's uh yeah i mean it's it's really good he does a great job it's at 4.6 on five for me oh that's, that's right. like i think that's your highest so far no it's the one um, okay it's up yeah, there it's, it's up there because you rarely go above 4.5 with your grades in mm -hmm. general anyway if we're talking about getting raw you could take it off you know i could but i won't yeah <laughs> i'm having fun that's what's important somebody said if you're gonna be on twitch what's really important is you have fun with it so i'm having fun with it like busta we're like, having fun like you you're a fun person i try Whenever you are good. Always good, baby. Um, I would I would say like he rhymes really well here, but like it just feels like it's more about the flow. Like the rhymes are really there, and he really does. Like I was I was listening for it because of what I just said in the last one. The last one felt so much more punchy, and this one feels more flowy. And it feels like there is a lot of fucking filler in this track, and it's mm. really just about this vibe. This to me is like 
a sound to flock to. Like it has like the art. Right. Like it's kind of not necessarily. It's only three I, minutes and eight seconds, folks. So not that I want to flock to it, but like it just has that kind of like dancey. Like you're gonna go and like there's whatever music. I can't remember what genre it's pulling from, but it feels like one of those Latin dancey. I'm about to get laid types of music oh, yeah. that it's pulling from. And then take off your shoes, make you dance in your socks for blocks. You know, like right off the beginning. You know, it's like gonna be one of those people be dipping a million hot watts hots. Better pause and take a look. There's a whole lot of whores run up in a storm. It, bitch, you try to take a focus, you for yours for sure. So yeah, he is rhyming, but like it just feels like smoother. Where in the last one, what I was trying to convey is the punchiness of his rhymes was mm. more accentuated in a way that is less so, I find, in most of his smoother flows. Anyway, you know, I either got it or you didn't, or I'm wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Not just I just wanted to point out he rhymes like for days everywhere. That's yeah, what he does all day every day. But he also has some real filler on this. Like a mama waited at the party, meet with a Marty, Marty, and a little Gotti and Scotty sipping Bacardi, so you know we running up everybody. I mean, he really, he really didn't say a whole lot there. He just kind of flowed really well, and it was like, and that that's really all I needed from Buster Rhymes <laughs> on this track. And it's not to say that the the lyrics are poor, but they're kind of like fluffy like that to me it's just kind of airy and loosey and maybe to you out there watching this you're like yo this is the best fucking bus rhymes and they're not bad like past the stingray see the quinte quinte chick doing merengue hey mr dj hit with a replay it's cool it's got this vibe to it but it's also that's it it's got a vibe to it that that's about as far as i can think with this track where it really matters to me yeah um Again, it's a 4.35 because it's got such a vibe, but it feels like a fun and refreshing little break from some of the other intensities. I love his speed and his intricate flow. It's so cool on this track and he flosses so well on it. Uh, the beat's okay. It's, it's, it's not my cup of tea, but it's really well done. I like it because it's different and it makes this album feel more alive and complete. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like this one, but like... It's not my favorite one, um, and I also feel like the volume um, on Busta's voice is lower than the sound of the music, and I found myself like reaching to listen for him. Like, mm. so I feel like that was a little production, uh, you know, error or detail that needed to be fixed. But that was me. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Um, he wants ladies to take it off. That's pretty much straightforward, right? Um, you know, it's fun to listen to. Um, it's easy. It's not my favorite. It's not the best one on the album, but it's fine. I don't hate it. I am. I agree. I gave it a 4.3 on five. All right. We can talk about a track featuring Janet Jackson. Miss next. Janet Jackson. It's uh, what's it going to be? And for those people here with us, as you know, we're going to listen to the track real quick. Whenever you are good. Okay. So um, I feel like with Janet being here, maybe you should take the lead on this one. Maybe you <laughs> can present this track. Sure. Um, so this is sort of like a, a sexy song with Janet. Um, and we've got like Busta and he's basically just like sweet talking um, like in like his verse. Like that's what he's doing. Um, you know, he's just trying to like talk sweet and like trying to like, you know, take it off. Uh, he's trying to get into the girl's pants. Um, so this is where we're at in the album. Um, this is the sexy part. Um, so I guess like people cared uh, about Janet Jackson in the 90s. Um, like, <laughs> like I feel like around this time she was in like Nutty Professor and she was like the hot good girl um, that people liked. Um, and like she had some hits like, you know, in the early 2000s as well. And like around this time. So, like, this was her, like, I guess, like, kind of comeback or, like, continuing. I don't know. Like, I don't really know if she's, like, popular anymore. Um, but, you know, I guess she was then. Um, and, you know, she's on the chorus. And she does have a lovely voice. And it was nice to listen to. I didn't mind it. Um, and it was, like, a nice mix for them. Just to have, like, kind of, like, that gentle softness, that, like, girly feminine femininity, like, that she kind of brings to the to the, to the track. 
versus like him and his I'm Buster Rhymes, like you know this loud bubbly like I don't know guy. I don't know. It was a it was a nice. It was nice to have like these two like mixing on this track. I'll just say that if anybody kind of gets what I mean. Um, so and the beat is good, um, and I feel like like the quality on this one is maybe a little bit higher. Like, and I'm wondering if, if like her and her people had something to do with it, um, because I imagine that you know she probably has like great people to work with, and not that Bust and Rhyme doesn't, but like I mean you're Michael Jackson's sister. Like I imagine that there's pretty good connections up there but um so I, I was just wondering if there was like different people that were being worked on because she was on this track um but I mean they both bring like a great job to, uh do a good job on this track um although it is um the longest track on this album it's five minutes and 24 seconds I believe um but it does get like a little bit repetitive so like for me just to listen to this like on its own like it would it would get annoying um and i think it would get annoying quick um but it's otherwise like on this album i'll listen to you know i'm trying to judge it as an album uh i gave this one a 4.4 because it is a good song although whether it's like a great song to be questioned but it's still they still do a good job super cool um i guess for me i have a different feeling i was mixed with the sense of this beat being something that is going to be totally for the ladies club banger r&b vibes whatever i get it we we all know this was meant to be a radio song uh there's a music video for it therefore definitely so i have a, a question radio. actually about what you're saying so um like if it's like a radio song and like you're saying that it's a girl song like what does a guy radio song sound like um <laughs> dmx's party up okay all that right. would be like a Swiss Beast, Hard, Grandios, Rick Ross, um, anything from Puff Daddy, where he's like sounding. <laughs> I uh, guess. Where like he's like sounding people. whatever, like Juicy by Biggie. These would be more, I would argue, male fantasy driven. Like, I'm the shit, I'm the guy, I'm the fucking cool dude, I'm okay. running the world, I get all the women. This is. I get to fuck Buster Rhymes. Like that's the fantasy mm. being sold here, right? And also, I, I think like because male, like she's so gentle and sweet, and like I don't know, she comes off like that at least to me. Personally, I don't want to have sex with Buster Rhymes, so that angle of the track isn't there. <laughs> and I guess for me, as the male listener, the incentive is I would want to be like into Janet Jackson, so that voice comes in and it gives the dude something to listen to. And not to say that it's not like that men aren't gonna want to listen to this, but I yeah. would argue this one was the yo buster you need a track for the women you need a track for the radio play we need something like that you know yeah. busta and he's like okay and then they got janet and i'm like okay and this was like the first i think she'd never um performed with a rapper i think before that's interesting yeah. i didn't even know that i'm gonna argue that i i think she sounds super generic i think like when I heard her her like verse on this or chorus, like gonna make it to make it to make your body wet. It just sounded like if you were to say in almost a generic way, what is um what is Janet Jackson gonna sound like? You know, like what is she what does she sound like? Mm -hmm. Just pick a random thing is this. That's the random sound that is there. Like it doesn't feel like she tried very hard to be like overtly distinct or special. It just feels like she showed up and phoned it in. I'm not gonna lie. I don't, hmm. I feel, it feels very formulaic to me. Okay. It doesn't have the same passion that a Buster Rhymes, because yo, Buster Rhymes' verses here are pretty ridiculous. The flow of it, the, the the tension of it, like it honestly sounds a little bit like Buster Rhymes is on the couch with you, looking you in the eye, sincerely trying to fuck you. And I really like that he gives that effect, that effect in the way he delivers it. The smooth, kind of deeper voice. Every lyric being fucking tight. Everything kind of being what it is. And then you get her washy, exactly what pop music of that era kind of sounds like yeah. chorus. And I feel like it dates the song and it makes it less enjoyable. But that's just me. I don't... I don't necessarily think this track was like for me. Whereas like you can hear on the on the other one, ELE2, she does a song with Alicia that was written by the next J or no, Mary J. Blige, sorry. Mm. I'm oh my 
gosh, Mary, Mary's bad verses are just like next level, <laughs> right? So like there's Mary's nothing the poorly. And when you hear almost the static nature of Janet Jackson by comparison to somebody like him, so I just have like Mary's beautiful dynamic voice in my brain right now, just considering how amazing she popped off on that track. And then you get to this flat overproduced Janet Jackson, like literally she doesn't have any range in her delivery. Yeah. It's it's this basic da, 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 like da, da, I'm a coming, I'm a fun na, 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 na. And it just sounds like it could have been any fucking pop chorus of that era. Yeah. And I feel like it totally takes away a little bit from the track and that's a little bit unfortunate for me. That that's just where I'm at with it. I think this is, in my opinion, the literal worst track on the project. Everything else that you would listen to is better, except for if you happen to want to listen to Buster Rhymes on that. But then in 2020, there's just that, baby, if you give it to me. You know, like there's so many <laughs> options for you to have Buster Rhymes macking on you if that's what you're looking for, <laughs> that I don't know why you would settle Dreams on this one. can come true, ladies. Um, he lost a lot of weight, yo. He's looking fucking pristine is all I got to say about <laughs> Buster Rhymes right now. Uh, I think that's it for this track. We can pop on to the next one then. So uh, the next track is called Hot Shit Making Ya Bounce. Okay. Now, I see that the viewer count has gone up a little bit. So thank you to the people who have now joined. We're going to take a quick second to just like orient, listen to the next track on the headphones. Unfortunately, we can't actually play it for y'all due to copyright laws and shit. It's kind of what it is. Yep. But uh, also, if we don't hear it, it's going to be a shit little portion of the review. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. So just bear with us for a second. All right. All right, I'm good when you are. Yeah. Um, I love the bass in this instrumental. Can I just say that right away? The you bass, sure can. the it just sounds like a like somebody actually picked up a bass guitar and slapped that shit a little bit and made it sound real funky and real nice for this track. But what do you think about it before I blibber blabber for a while? Okay, so um, yeah, this one um, again, like I went in with like you know different expectations, you know, hot shit making it bounce, right? That's what this one's called. So I would think again, uh, I'm going in to hear some like really fun dancey type music, and yet it <laughs> is not. Uh, like, you know, again, kind of disappointing. Uh, like, for me, this one felt like a sleeper. Like, it just was probably, like, my least favorite one on the album. What? You like, like the Janet Jackson one better than this? Kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. You're yeah, allowed. You're yeah. allowed. Um, like, maybe at this point, like, I was kind of, like, you know, getting too used to, like, hearing Busta and, like, it all just kind of was, like you know sounding the same for me like it is you know getting close to like the end of the album so maybe it was like just too much of a good thing but for me i don't know like i would have skipped this one i i mean it's fine it's not a terrible song it's just not the best one um you know his rhymes are good you know have some fun between the work do that you know good message he's got great rhymes as usual his flow is great um and i like how easy him he makes his rhymes sound like he just makes it sound like it's like easy to just spit a million miles a minute like it's just like oh okay i'm just gonna do this and uh, you know whatever no big deal um like he just it, i think it's really cool like what he does and just like the way he kind of comes across but for me like i said a bit of a sleeper so i gave this one a four on five i mean at this point too uh when you're listening to a project with this many tracks on it and where the main purpose of the rap style is to convey skill, right? Because Buster Rhymes is not dropping hot concepts on us track to track here, right? Yeah. Like, let's be real. In the last, for this album, the introduction presented some strong concepts. On the first two or three songs were a little conceptual, kind of tying into that main theme of, you know, the world is kind of fucked up and, you know, Buster Rhymes and his soldiers are going to pave the new way and show you how it's all been done. And then it's almost like the album starts again and turns into the most regular flow of just jams to kind of fuck with. Yeah. And like he gave up on the concept and just kind of rolled with the album. Not to say that like he like totally like ditched the concept entirely. Well, 
a little bitty ditch the concept because <laughs> the rest of the album just kind of was Buster Rhymes is the shit. Yeah. Which, if the concept is the extension level event is simply that Buster Rhymes and his peeps is the shit and gonna fuck you up, I guess that's fair. But this, at this point, like, yeah, this shit here be the boss of me. None of y'all is ready to run. Go see the pharmacy. Prepare for the coming of another grand larceny. Pardon me. You ain't even a little hard to me. Shit, I'll spit. I'll slice you up in your main artery. It's really on the same point of what we've been getting. Buster Rhymes is next level. I actually like when he goes latest edition added to the street encyclopedia. That is one of my favorite bars on the album because he really is. He is part of that lexicon. He is part of that greatness. But at the end of the day, he's not necessarily conceptually bringing anything new here. However, he is hitting up with that slow flow. He is bouncing on this beat. The beat sounds a little bit different than what we've been getting. It doesn't have the same thing. And it's got like a slow bounce to it. It's almost like your car bouncing is what I picture for this track mm. a lot more than the human. Because picture the slow cadence of a car bouncing to this song. I feel like that makes a lot more sense. Plus you're stoned out your mind, you're riding, you're vibing, you're not necessarily moving, you're just high and you're cruising. And I feel like that's a little bit more the vibe that we're getting on it. Still, I don't have a lot more to comment on this one. Um, I'm going to give it a 4.35. I feel like the beat is pretty stellar. It's pretty great to listen to. And uh, overall, I don't want to waste y'all time. So uh, I guess you could say, what the fuck you want? Yeah. Quite exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> All right, for those watching, we're going to just take that quick second here to listen to the track and uh, whatnot. Also, what do you guys think about this album? Are you a fan of this Buster Rhymes project? Is it something that you listen to? Man, this beat's fucking pumping. Are you ready? Okay. So, did you catch who produced this one? No. Diamond D from oh, Digging in the Crates. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He did the production. So, you got some fucking legendary shit going on on That's that cool. one. Um, I thought that was dope. Good uh, catch. I'm going to be completely real with you. If you want my review on this track, it's like practically word for word the same as what I would have said on the last track. Oh. It's really hard for me to add more commentary here. It's great. Like, he pulls stunts like Evil Knievel, me and my people fly like an eagle and blow your entire cathedral. Hurry. It's great bars. It's great rhyming. It's him and his peeps is the best. It's all the things. It's all just of it. all of the same things that we keep getting over and over again. But... As much as I'm saying this as a reviewer, because I know it's like hard for me to come up with insightful commentary on repetition, as a listener, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. And I'm not bored. Please don't take it like I'm bored. I love the beat. I like what Diamond did. My head's still bopping. Buster Rhymes is still flowing. It's just, what am I going to say? He's extremely yeah. talented. Y'all get the point. This video was not short. So... At that point, I'm going to leave it at that. The chorus is banging. Nice. I like the repetition in it. The bars are great. Oh, sorry. I do like when he goes, blast the challenger way out of space like Galaga, Battlestar Galactica across my diameter. Because that's fucking dope because he's doing space bars and it's pretty fucking great. I did forget about that. Anybody that can bring, because the challenger is a real Galactica. life space, a real life rocket ship too. Mm -hmm. And he's blasting the challenger like people who oppose. Okay, y'all get it. Buster yep. Rhymes, but it's not like... Like you didn't they're all fantastic need, rhymes, it's but not, they're great. It's just you didn't need me to explain them to you. Yeah. My mom could have picked up these bars and said, <laughs> okay, I get it. Right. Um, and that's okay too. You know, not everything has to be Black Dot and fucking MF Doom. Uh, I gave this shit a 4.35. It's pretty dope. Nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, same sort of thing I'm feeling, I guess. So, I mean, it is another sort of rapidity rap rap one. Like, it's kind of like that. You know, he's spitting, you know, great bars and coming in hard. Um, it's really hype. The beat uh, is like super fun. I like that. I like that. 
Um, really, like, this is one that you need to hear. Like, I mean, I can't explain much about it just because it is what it is. Like, it's sound. Like, <laughs> it's hard for me to, like, describe his sound. Um, he's spitting hard. It's super tight. He's showing off. Um, it's really good. I, I, I really do enjoy listening to, like, Busta's skills. So, same sort of thing. Like, I'm not feeling bored or anything. Like, I, I enjoy listening to him. And it is, like, a hard-hitting song. So, I give this one a 4.5 on 5. Mm. All right, uh, I think we can move on to the last real this song on this project! War. Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just out yeah. of out of nowhere for those watching because this we're gonna transition in a second. But out of nowhere, this punctuation starts showing up on the album title with the Janet Jackson song, and it just keeps coming. But it didn't exist on the first part. It just randomly like, and not just anything two punctuation points for each time it got used it's just so arbitrary and random to me okay okay this means war that's what we're doing now yeah. all right so we're gonna listen to that track you know what's real cool what uh our recent follower uh jrx babe actually hosted our channel for five viewers 14 minutes ago i don't fully know what that means but big ups to that that's super cool if you're watching because hits the heart to see something like that especially because we're new on twitch um we're learning as we go and shit so um yeah let me know when you're ready on this one What do you think about this beautiful War Pigs uh, interpolation? Yeah. Um, so this one has um, like Iron Man by Black Sabbath mixed in and like it works super well. I, I love listening to Ozzy. Like I, he's just he's just the best. Uh, like I just love Ozzy. Like what? you should listen to Ozzy like once a day. Just throw him on. Like he's just a hoot. Uh, <laughs> like I do. I really do. I really mean it. Um, like for as like crazy as he is, like he's just a great guy. Uh, so um, Busta wants like hard drums on this one, and I appreciate that because you know you don't want to go soft for Ozzy. So <laughs> and this is a hard song, so I like it, um, and I really enjoy seeing and hearing um, mixing like genres and stuff like that like together. Um, and making something new and great, um, you know, like this, like hard, you know, you know, metal rock, whatever, uh, mixed with like this, like spitting super fasty fast, like rapidy rap, like kind of mixing the two. And like, it's not necessarily something you would think of. So, but it works and it works really well. Um, I really like this one. Um, and like for me, maybe I'm thinking, you know, it's maybe more like Aussie, like influencing me and like the beat, like just kind of takes over for me um more than busta but like busta also does a great job on this one so i don't know it could just be like the classic sounds of like aussie like influencing me but i don't know i thought it was good i gave it a 4.6 on 5. so i love it too because i mean you can't fuck up a beat like that in my opinion yeah and he didn't they didn't try to sorry let me rephrase all that <laughs> they didn't try to do like what puff daddy i'm gonna say puff daddy for the era did with that led <laughs> zeppelin thing where they just wreck the beat right this just kind of feels like they just threw on the instrumental version of war pigs almost as is and fucked with the bass a little bit and then Ozzy showed up and did this chorus for them. Because I'm pretty... I don't know if that's actually sampled from War Pigs or if Ozzy um, showed up and did the, the, the credits live. Um, I'm not sure. I'm checking to see if Genius has the credits as I'm saying that as a little bit of filler. But I don't... I think it samples Iron Man. I don't know if uh, Ozzy Osbourne actually showed up and did the vocals there. Either way, it could have been. It could have been unique. I don't know. You can tell I don't know fucking Iron Man that well. Um... <laughs> But I, I feel like it was like he came and did it live because Ozzy's the kind of dude that would be like, you're going to pay me to cover my song like that? For sure, Buster Rhymes, I'll take your money. Plus, he's open-minded in music like that. Yeah. He really is. Um, but I like the way he fucking – because this is one of those songs where all of a sudden – 
Buster Rhymes has a bit of like a narrative to the track. Like it's not just um I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the shit. It's more yeah. like, yo, everybody like fucking who crossed me, I'm fucking mad. Y'all fucking violated the code. I like when he goes, disloyal motherfuckers, I'm going to banish you all. And celebrate <laughs> all of you in absence once I get rid of you all. And I just love the way he does that delivery and there's this rage and this anger to his voice that just, it just, just resonates and it slaps so fucking hard. And uh, he just rides the beast so well. Like, he just really fits well. And to me, this is a great case point where you don't have to take, like, rock beats and add fucking boom bap drums to them and hip hopify them in yep. order to rap on them. You can just rap on the beat yeah. as it was done. It exists. And then Ozzy just take a look inside you can and then you're like okay and then ozzy sounds like shit on this which is part of why i think it was actually redone later on and not like sampling like the old things because when i say sounds like shit i mean it sounds like ozzy just fucking wailing like Aah. and it sounds amazing in that regard like it sounds good in the construct of an art song it sounds like shit in the context of Ozzy Osbourne like being in the what I believe to be the pristine of his vocal work that I've done. But I also could be wrong. That could just be the War Pig sample and I sound like a fucking moron to a lot of people right now. It is what it is sometimes when you're doing <laughs> this shit. Um, I feel like considering this is the last song on the album, it's a really cool thing because it was a bold move. He probably knew this was a risk, so he tucked it so deep in the album that basically uh, nobody was going to listen to it unless you were hyper committed. And then if you didn't like it, oh well, it's the last track on the project basically, so you can just fucking turn it off if you're not down. But I really like he it. He did show up. I'm finding, I found an MTV article from 1998, and he was saying that Ozzy and Buster Rhymes entered a New York studio together over the weekend to team up over a new track. That's amazing. Because it cause cause kind of sounds like reality TV Ozzy era. Mm -hmm. Not it could, That doesn't sound like the same energy. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, Ozzy yeah. lost his mind. Like, you know, like, you know that shit. It was yeah. very crisp and clear. And yep. What came on this album was very in the same vein of. And I, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that with disrespect. This is one of the best songs on this album, and I'm giving it a 4.5, and I think it is truly wonderful. It just is what it is. It makes Ozzy so fucking cool for doing it, is what really it means to me. Yeah. I'm certain he made bank on this track. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I, I don't have a lot more to comment on it. I just think it's a great revenge tune, and I think it's got a great energy to it. Yeah. Um, that I guess that means there's one more. This the little outro. outro yeah. The the burial song. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So for those of you watching, we're gonna take our quick little listen, and it's gonna be quick. I don't think we have to listen very long for this one. Yeah, no. <laughs> there's like um there's like an organ or an accordion or something in the beat of this little instrumental. It's like this weird sound that kind of just resonates. And this is five minutes, right? Yeah. And this is the era. It is a relatively long one because most of his songs are like in the three minute range. It's just the era though of outros. I'm glad we're past that. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, that's not true. J. Cole had that outro on 2014 Forest Hills Drive that was very long. But outros are not good. This kind of outro, this kind of, it's basically the credits. It's basically like these last thoughts, like like the Kanye West outro on fucking College Dropout. Like okay. they're not, they're just long. Like you listen to them once, you know it's nice. Everything and every motherfucker gets dealt with accordingly. Mock my words. I told you on the coming. There was only five years left. Now there's only one year left. Dawn of the new millennium. <laughs> and he's so slow on this, and he's just talking, and he says a bunch of shit like look it's beautiful in the sense of a mantra and i actually really respect and admire it like a lot of the core essences of what the theme of the album was supposed to be are brought back up and reiterated and really brought forth and you know you gotta like work towards survival stack your wealth be true to yourself don't be fucking fake all that yeah. other bullshit that, that you know come not bullshit but all the things that come through in this thing and then stay tuned, motherfucker. See you on January 1st in the new era when the extinction level's taking place. And I'll be there because I'm going to be ready. And this, that, the next thing. So I feel like it's just super strong in that regard. 
but I would never fucking listen to this shit again because it's it's fine. It's yeah. just repeating. It's just kind of repeating and summarizing. It's the the footnotes, the epilogue. And as we proceed to leave this great saga, Mr. Buster Rhymes has some last thoughts, and then he just says them, and I'm like, mm, okay, the, I heard it once. I got it. We are good. <laughs> um, I'm giving this a four. It's All a four. Right. Okay. I, I don't have more to say about that one. All right. So yeah, I mean, this is. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It, you know, he's sort of. You know, going through, he's talking about going through tougher times and how they make people stronger and, you know, how everybody has, you know, the every single person on earth and has ever lived has had hardships and has things that they've had to, like, live through and work through and deal with. And, you know, they've, you know, whether it's knocked them down or whether it's made them stronger and more resilient. So just sort of like talking about that and like also like on the same lines as is as like the the fear of like the new millennium and like what that was going to bring because like i said you know at the very beginning nobody knew what was going to happen when the clock struck midnight at 2000 like you know there was like lots of fear you know the end of the world type shit um and you know sort of like the his theory or what he's talking about is that in order to build we must destroy and you know and while at the same time like defending the truth and you know what everybody knows as like the, the the be all and end all the truth that you know resides above us and sort of like just making sure that that doesn't go away and uh so it's kind of interesting in like that sense um and that those will have to be you know destroyed and buried and like kind of like the bad things that we're kind of hoping to maybe like leave in the past um or that, that's going to make us stronger uh, because we've lived through all these things. And so, like, it's kind of like that and to those people and to those situations, like, that's kind of what he dedicates this album to. Mm. Um, and that the, those who survive and the survivalists will make it to the other side of the millennium by following what he's telling us to do. So if we listen to, to Basta, he knows what's up. And, you know, just to kind of carry through the truth and be strong and be resilient. And, uh, you know, at the same time, well, well, there was that still like that, you know, genuine fear that I think, you know, everybody or most people did kind of experience. Like even as a kid, like I remember, you know, like, oh, my gosh, like what's going to happen? Like, not that it was like I was terrified. I went to like a like I remember, you know, going to like a party, you know, to, you know, for at New Year's for 2000. And, you know, at the same time, like, there was, like, still, like, a little tinge of, like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Are the computers going to be able to turn on? Like, it was more than that. Like, it wasn't that I thought that, you know, every volcano and stuff was going to explode. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a powerful outro. I mean, it does kind of encapsulate the, the whole thing. Um, so I gave this a 4.3 on 5. All right. So I guess that brings us to the end of our little review here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get the album a 4.427 on the math of all of my grades divided. I would definitely call this a classic. Mm -hmm. I think it is really enjoyable in 2020. I think that there are many songs on this project that are really able to like throw on and I think it will just be high energy like forever. I think like give me some more. Like I put that in my stories on Facebook and like <laughs> four people were like, bro, how the fuck do you not know this classic? Like what the fuck's wrong with you? And I get it. We're learning. And there's a lot of tracks on this album that I think hold that same level of replayability for different vibes mm -hmm. and it's actually really well constructed i absolutely think he gave up on the story and <laughs> yes. uh like he tried and then he said eh fuck it like writing a concept album is a little hard but at the same time i think he delivered on a great cohesive album of showcasing how flip mode is changing the game and giving you the template for how to rap really well so in that regard he kind of fucked up the game and you know the new millennium of rap is busta rhymes and flip mode and in that perspective if you want to be really 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 loose with it he totally lived up to an interpretation of what the album's theme could be. Mm. I'm stretching. Yeah. Because I heard the second album, and he lived up to it in part two, in my opinion. Part two is what it's supposed to be, in okay. my opinion. It, it could be a little, still a little stretchy, but still more to it than not. Um, but I love the production. I love the versatility on this album. And I really think it delivers in everything you'd want from a classic hip-hop album. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. I'm really happy that we had the opportunity to discuss Buster Rhymes. Well, I guess for me to do two Buster Rhymes albums in the same weekend. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was really great. I gave this a 4.36 on 5, so it's an 87%. 
I would definitely classify this as a classic. Um, I don't, like for me, there weren't any fives on this album, but there was also wasn't anything that was really lower. There wasn't anything that was lower than a four. Um, and it was really like a good like range between like 4.3 and like 4.5. Like, you know, it, it, that's a pretty good album. Um, and I definitely agree with you. Like I, you know, through like if you're going to have like this like particular intro and this particular outro, mostly the intro um, and the cover art and the title of the album. Um, so those three things, if you're going to have them, like you need to have some sort of theme that's going to like flow through for at least, you know, even just throw in a few songs here and there that kind of have that kind of feeling. Whereas it felt like the beginning had some and then the end had the outro. But besides that, there really wasn't much continuation on like the topic of like the world ending and Y2K and like the apocalypse and like all of that kind of stuff. So like there was that that was lacking. But I mean, I, I really like the, the album regardless. And it really is fantastic that he's able to to show that he's able to garner um you know like the versatile like uh features that he has i mean yes janet jackson but she is like she's still janet jackson whether or not you know who she is like she is somebody and ozzy osbourne same thing like he is somebody like he like these are like big names so for him to be able to like have them you know and they're people that aren't in the rap game like they're in a different sphere and so it's kind of cool that he's able to like have like these like versatile characters show up on his album and i think that that's kind of like a fun thing to do um so yeah i mean it's a classic i like it fair enough so i guess that's it we did it we got to the end of this album review our <laughs> second <laughs> ever live one because let me tell you something it's a little different live it's still Just a lot be, the same a little bit different but you know that everything you're saying is being watched by people and there's no erasing mm -hmm. it kind of in the same way yeah but it's cool. So thank you for being here with us. We totally appreciate you. To our stupidities. Um, I appreciate all of you on the Twitch that were live with us, that maybe popped in, popped out, whatever. Y'all are superheroes and I freaking respect y'all. Uh, for you watching it on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. If you happen to be one of those few people on Spotify even listening to this later on, big ups to all of you. Welcome. You're my friends. Let us know what you think in the comments as usual. Let us know if you like it, like the video on the YouTube, subscribe to the channel slash follow slash whatever the appropriate button is you know what to um, do special thanks to the patrons ismail gadamsi chris prada jonathan barn cj black hurricane linda williams and scribble to top to support what we do uh and if you are into what we do is patreon.com slash behind that suit you can uh, check out all the stuff there basically you get to tell us about some albums you want to see us review and things like that yeah um and all that to say uh, i think i'm running out i make music myself you can check that out uh links in description all that good stuff and i think we're at the end of it i think That's we it, have reached the point so for those of you watching on twitch it's been a a fucking pleasure but live long and prosper everybody Peace, have guys. a wonderful day bye